All right, uh, uh, it's a very good morning to you. Um, we are broadcasting live from the police headquarters in Vivinduk. And of course, my name is Wanda. Um, we haven't done this in a long, long time, and I feel like I'm a fish out of water. But we have to do this because uh, the inspector general, the police inspector general is retiring next month. Now, we had to do this courtesy to visit him and have a long conversation with him where we are going to look at uh, the journey that he has walked so far to be where he is now. And being an inspector general and being in charge of the uh, police force, the people who collect um, uh, um, inform information that is used in the courts it's not an easy thing. It doesn't come easily. There are challenges, there are failures, there are successes. And today we want to talk so much, to dwell much on his successes and um, what the future holds for the Namibian police. And of course, like I said, we are broadcasting live from the police headquarters here in Vintuk. My name is Wanda, and um, we shall be introducing the Inspector General any time soon. And I see there's also a contingent here of uh, top police officer officers who will be watching and following the, con the conversation to today. Let me hasten to say that this is nothing about controversy because it's uh, for us at Eagle FM because we have been working with um, him as well as with all other offi officers so well, we just want him to take us through the journey that he has walked until now. And he will be retiring next month. So if you are joining me, we are live from the police headquarters here in Vinduk once again. This is Eagle FFM. You can follow this conversation on our Facebook page, and you can also listen in on the radio, and you can jo join us on the app. So, um... We do not have to take much of the time. Let me just introduce you to the Inspector General. Uh, Inspector General, thank you for welc welcoming us here, and we appreciate it. Um, thank you very much um, for coming. Yes. At uh, your office. And sometimes you, you don't come also oftenly. Uh, <laughs> since you dumped us here. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. You forget us, and uh, we never come. Yeah. I'm no. Glad that you are here today. Yeah. No, I was uh, just saying I feel like a fish out of uh, water before because in this studio, I feel I feel I'm in charge, but <laughs> out here with all the brass that I see, I feel unsettled. All right, but um, we don't have to waste much of uh, uh, the time here. Um, we, we need you, Inspector General, General General, to, to take us through the journey that you have walked so far. Let us start with where you were, where you were born, your family, how you grew up, and then we move, we move on. Um, yes, um, it has been a, a long, long ago. Mm -hmm. when, uh, and how long, long ago can... can uh, that start? is... Um, 1962. 1962, yeah. Uh, when um, uh, a boy was born yeah. at a place called Oshihunga, mm -hmm. grown up at a, at a place called Pakadu, uh, um, mm -hmm. um, just near Nelewa there. And um, uh, after my mother passed her on when I was very, very young, mm -hmm. I can't even remember her. The world was uh, a bit difficult for me, mm. and I become I became uh, a person who is scavenging for opportunities. Mm. In so any how, age, sorry, age. how old how old were you? Can you estimate for us? Were you three years, five years, seven years? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, uh, I might be around four, five. Four years. Yeah. Okay. When so when she passed on, on who? Who took you in to, to look after you? Um, um, my, I, went, I was in my, my father's house. Mm -hmm. 
but I was given another uh, step stepmother. Okay. And uh, I is uh, I have been with that stepmother, and um, when I grew up a bit, I started looking after cattle, mm -hmm. um, particularly auction, uh, and um, yeah, uh, the struggle of uh, homestead, mm -hmm. uh, looking after animals and uh, participating in the cultivation of uh, mahango field, and uh, yeah, just like any other boy in the in the village so it, that was from the age of 4 no 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 that, that, yeah yeah from the age of 4 when my mother passed on okay yes so then um, when i grew up i think when i was 8 i i had to escape from my father's house I came to my uncle's house at, at, at Akadu. Did you leave or you escaped? I, I, just, uh, I just left uh, without telling anybody where I was going. Why? Uh, because of some uh, treatments, mm. harsh treatment at home. Yeah. And um, uh, treatment that uh, uh, kept, kept on uh, reminding me the love I had from my mother mm. and uh, I don't have it here. Yeah. Now and uh, those treatment made me to just uh, to go in in the world, probably not even knowing where I was going. Okay. I just uh, to get away from the situation mm -hmm. uh, from home. Yeah. So then but I. But before you go on, uh, Ig, you speak as if you were the only one in your mother's her mother's her mother's her mother's house. Were you the only one, or you also had some other siblings? No, from my mother, mm -hmm. we, 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 were, we were five okay. from my mother. Mm -hmm. And um, I was the last born in my, from my mother's side. Mm -hmm. um, others were grown up, yeah. and um, some of them uh, are the ones who were also malhandling me. And um, yeah, the, the, the part of... Uh, of uh, bringing up children. Yeah. Maybe I was naughty, I'm not too sure, mm -hmm. but I had to face some blunders from, from some of my, my brothers. Okay. <laughs> then so I, then you left to go to your uncle's? Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I left to come, I came to my uncle. Yeah. I, stay, I stayed there with one of my brothers, the one that I followed immediately. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a late now, um, yeah. he was murdered by this uh, colonial forces. And then uh, um, uh, when I came to my, my uncle, I came to Ondangwa mm -hmm. to see whether I can join the contract labor. Yeah. And I was told that I was too young. Mm -hmm. How young were you, were you then? No, there, uh, I think I was around eight. Eight years. Yeah. So and eight, then eight they, years you wanted to become a contract labor? A contract labor. labor. But uh, when I came there, they looked at me. I was very short. I was very thin. Mm. They took me through these uh, medical uh, tests. Test, yeah. They look whether you have some hairs around here. Mm. If there is, if it is like your the palm of your hand, they mm. say no, no, you are too young. <laughs> Go home. Yeah. So I was sent home. I went back to the the house of my uncle. Mm -hmm. I stayed there, I think, uh, probably three months, and I escaped to Angola. But when I went to Angola, I did not go to see my, my father. I went to a place called uh, Ombala Mungu. Did, Ombala you know, did you know any, anyone, anyone there? No. I was just uh, wandering around, and the, the, when I went to Ombala Mungu, I find uh, a certain person called uh, Shipeta, a businessman. Yeah. With a lot of kettles, and is a, is a white man, but he speaks of Shimbaja. And uh, he said, uh, Small boy, you will look after my goat. Mm -hmm. Then I, I started looking after goats. No, no money, but uh, I am given uh, clothes, clothing, a shirt, and a t shirt, and a food. And you were eight, eight there? Yeah, I was around eight there. Mm -hmm. So I was looking after those goats, and uh, no, no money, no. But then many ideas and probably are just wondering in my, when I'm mingling with others, mm. other, other boys that I find there looking uh, uh, after cattle for other people and uh, goats, 
we develop an idea of uh, trying to get another opportunity. And then we escaped from Mbala Mungu to a place called Okahenge. Mm. It's in Ombaja also. Yeah. In Ombaja, I find uh, someone, a white man, a contractor, and then he said, um, you, you boy, you should stay with me cleaning in my house uh, and uh, tell, uh, teaching me how to, to cook for him so that when he comes at, uh, at one o'clock, yeah. um, then he, he finds the food there. Mm -hmm. I was struggling. I didn't know how to cook, but I struggled. Mm -hmm. he, he told me what to do. Sometimes he comes and uh, he's upset with the, the, the way the food was prepared, but I, the life went on. Mm -hmm. And then I stayed with him. Uh, my colleague who came with me also got a job somewhere there. Yeah. We stayed there for some times, for some months, and then we decided, no man, let's go somewhere else. So we got into a truck, and that truck took us up to a place called Shangongo. It was time, further into Angola now. Yeah. At a, at a place called Oshangongo. It used to, call, to be called uh, Fort, uh, Fort Sandra or something like that, mm. near the Kunene River. Okay. So we went there. They, they recruit uh, boys to go and work at cotton and, uh, and, uh, and the tobacco mm. in Angola. It is called uh, people who are going to work at Ombishi. So we went there, and we went there trying to see whether they, we can be recruited. We were told, no, 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 you are too young. Mm. You can't uh, go to tobacco. Yeah. Then we went out and said, what can we do? Let's go and look for a job. So we find some uh, Portuguese who wanted uh, some people to go and work at their garden, yeah. uh, uh, particularly uh, cabbage, sweet potatoes, and so on. Mm -hmm. So we went to a place called uh, Freshieri in the Capelongo along the river, yeah. the other side of the river now. We were on this side of the river, mm -hmm. uh, where Shangongo is. That those, those days, they used to have a, a pandoon. There was no bridge in that, uh, that, uh, that river. So we went uh, in that pandoon. We went on the other side. It's like a canoe. Uh, yeah, a big okay. one that you can right. carry yeah. even vehicles. Mm. So we went with this, uh, this man at the fresh air. We worked there. There I used to eat nice sweet potato and the milk mm. because these are, these are Portuguese who were who specialized in uh, agriculture, but uh, hot, uh, horticulture yeah. and uh, big sweet potatoes. And, uh, so there I was looking, I was working at the, the gardens and looking after cattle. So the cattle used to go and graze on the other side of the river. Because I didn't know how to swim, this guy, these people, they told me, no, when the kettles are going to, to cross the river, yeah. you just hold the tail of the kettle. And, then you, and you swim you together with the kettle on the other side. Yeah. So that was the routine. In the morning, working in the garden, in the afternoon, go with the kettle that side. But uh, I was well fed there. Mm -hmm. they, they used to feed us nicely. So I stayed for some time. So I was a bit fed now because I was well fed. And then we decided to come to go back to Oshangongo, mm. at, at Oshangongo where we came from, after some months. Mm. Only some months, all these things just, not even here. And then uh, we went back there, they looked at us and said, oh, now you are, seems you, you are fit. Yeah, 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 you yeah. Are fit. So we were recruited. When we were recruited, we went to to work at a, 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 a farm, a tobacco farm in Angola at a place called Kilenge, Kilenge, tobacco, for 12 months. So we went there, we yeah. worked, it, is, it was hard. The, the boss was, uh, was very harsh, and uh, we worked, and we finished our contract, 12 months. Yeah. And then I went back. But how much when you finish. You... How much were you pay, pay, paid then? We used to pay um, 100 uh, uh, scudo. The, the, that, that time, mm. the money, is, uh, the money used to be called scudo. Yeah. Or a scudo. Or a scudo. I think it's a scudo. A scudo. Mm -hmm. And they only give you, every month they give you 50, I think. 
The rest you will get it at the, uh, when you complete your your contract. Your contract. Yeah. And these people they were so clever. When the, the day um, of payment, when you get your salary, that day they take all of us. They take us to their shop, so they make sure that we spend the this money there. in yeah. their in their shop. And because we were so probably naive, what do we buy? Orange sweets uh, and all those type of things. Yeah. And the soap, of course. And then uh, we finished our contract, uh, I came. There, all those who were there, they only speak Oshimbaja. And when I came from there, I, I was fluent in Oshimbaja. Mm -hmm. uh, normally I speak Oshimbaja, but okay. uh, when I came from there. So from there I came back, I, I, we, we drove to Ombala Mungu. Remember where I started yeah. everything? Mm -hmm. Because it's where they dropped us as, as a contractor, as a... As an employee, employer, yeah. mm -hmm. they have to drop us at the nearest place, our nearest place. Yeah. And um, the place for our nearest uh, home state. Then from there, they dropped me there. I had my suitcase. I had, uh, because they gave us money, we yeah. bought, I bought a blanket. I bought uh, a belt. Those days, a, a belt like a, a, a snake, a color of a snake. Mm -hmm. Those plastic shoes. It's like a gentleman now. And, and you uh, were you were ten, twelve. Yeah, I think it was ten. It was, uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was ten there. Ten years. Yeah. So at that uh, at that age, you could be on your own, no contact with family. No contact. Nothing. Telephone, nothing, nothing. And you also didn't have a birth certificate, no document. Nothing, no document. And the worst to that, they didn't even in the family. They don't know where I was because there is no contact. Mm. So when they dropped me there, they just I just uh, uh, went through the roads where this road was leading me to the to Oshihunga, mm. where my father was. Yeah. And then I went with my suitcase on my head. I went following the that road. So Grand you knew road. you knew exactly where you were supposed to go. Yes. All right. Because even everyone knows that this road goes to Oshunga. Yeah. And the good enough is that this road does not pass far away from my father's home street. Mm -hmm. And then I followed, I followed, I walked. Maybe I walked it from the morning. Around one o'clock there in midday, there was a car coming from, from uh, the same direction where mm -hmm. I was coming from. And then they, they picked me up and they, they dropped me at the nearest point uh, from my father's house. Yeah. So I went with my suitcase. I came home there. Strange. I you look at the people. People mm. they they are surprised when I speak to them. I speak of Shimbaja, yeah. and then they speak of Shimbaja. Ah, this boy, where, where have you learned this language now? Then I had, I had to explain. Mm. I had, um, then I said this is what happened. Of course, you stay there. Few money. When you come at a village, everybody look at you and say, "Oh, some some, some people mm -hmm. say with new clothing and yeah. uh, soap." You know, in those days, soap were not so so often available. Mm -hmm. But if you we, we even we used to to uh, what is this to apply a soap so that we can have a better, better smell. Yeah, uh, no Vaseline, but. Uh, but the soap was it. Yeah. Even I'm here, you hear the, the smell. The smell nice. of the soap, yeah. <laughs> so I stayed there at my, my father's house for three months, mm -hmm. and then I came to Ojoni. Ojoni is in the southwest Africa at that time. Yeah. I crossed the border, I came to my, my, my uncle. I stayed there. Uh, I find my brother that I followed because he was staying here. Mm. And then we stayed uh, for some months. Then I went to, I went to Ndangwa again. When I went to Ndangwa, I wanted to be recruited. I find uh, uh, someone called uh, Johannes Siepo and the Martin Siepo. Yeah. Uh, Johannes Siepo is the father of Martin, but they, these are the people who were dealing with the recruitment. Okay. So when we we come, we came there. We stayed for some days, and then they used to call now. 
Uh, those who are going to work in Wolves Bay, people are running. If you come first, they will say, you, 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 you. Those who are going to work in Orange Mount, people are just coming in. Yeah. And there was one guy called Peter. Peter. We call him Peter Bender. Because when he says Peter, I don't know, he says Bend, Bend, Bend is having yeah. a stick, a stick yeah. to push people back. Because when they are called, they all, all come. Then he's having a, 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 this like a, a pokolo, a palm tree. It's splitting if you don't run. Mm -hmm. Then when we were called, uh, they said the farm, or cattle farm, mm -hmm. sheep, goat, we came. They looked at me, you, 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 you. And we went through the same process. Then when they looked at me, and said, no, no, you are still young. Then Martin, Martin Shepo, uh, who was there, looked yeah. at me and said, boy, Mm. I think you are, you, are, you are good to work at my place. At my place. Mm -hmm. At Ongwediva there. So okay. he took me. He said, when you grow up, I will, I will find a good job for you. Mm. So he took me at, my, at his house. Uh, it's like a kabasho where you sell uh, beer and, uh, and so on. I find there a small uh, a daughter. We were working with a daughter. Mm. But... Every time he comes from, from Mondangwa, Okaholi is just uh, complaining because we did not sell much. Yeah. But uh, there, that time in his shop, only these soldiers, African soldiers, used to buy there. Mm. If they don't pass that day, no, say, no enough sale. And he started complaining. Oh, when I had, I had to, to run away, I had to escape. Again. Again, from that house. So I was walking and looking at that tower of Oshakati. I thought that the tower was very near. Mm. The tower was very far. And I went, I did not follow the road. Yeah. I went in the, in the Mahangu field because uh, I was thinking maybe they would follow me. But I did not take even a suite in that, uh, that shop. Mm. Then I went, I came to Oshakati. And when I came in Oshakati, um, I don't know anybody, I don't know where to go. But I, I went at a place at the service station, yeah. at the turn to Okahau. They were, they say, at the corner here, there was a, there, there was a, a, a service station. And they used to have a, a trucks from Angola, mm. bringing a cooker, a beers from Angola. Yeah. When they come with those uh, trucks, now they look for boys to offload them. So I, I was uh, lucky to be there to offered them, and then we were given, uh, after we offered them, we were given 50 cents mm. each. And where would you stay then? No, no, that day I arrived there. Okay. The same day I arrived there. And you knew no one? No one, no one. So when we all finished the off offloading, we were paid. Then I, I spoke to the driver of the truck. Where are you going, you people? No, no, we are going to Onjiva. Can you take me? Onjiva, back to Angola. Back to Angola. Can you take me? Mm. With the truck. We went. First, I bought my fatty cake with the, the 50 cent. Mm. Uh, I think I bought something to drink. This is uh, home brew or something. And then uh, into a truck, Onjiva. At Onjiva, there's a place of uh, certain white men called Kachaka or Kachaka, who used to recruit, just like Oshangongo, mm. who used to recruit young people to go and work. In, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the farms in Angola. Yeah. So we went there. They looked at us. We were recruited back to Oshilenge. Well, the, the first farm mm. where I went. Yeah. Back to Oshilenge. But at this time, mm. cotton. No so, more you so you qualified now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cotton people. This time I did not go for tobacco, but uh, yeah. for cotton. Mm -hmm. And the cotton was difficult to work on. Because when you harvest the cotton, for the bag to be full, mm. you have to put the cotton and you get a stick, and then you pound, pound until the bag is, is just, it's very, yeah. Yeah. it's difficult. Mm. And the guy, the owner was so harsh with us. He used to beat us. Mm. And then uh, one of the uh, workers who were with us there, who were elders, they said, no, 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 we should go and report this guy. 
at the, at the, at the, at the office of the governor's office or mayor's office mm. at a Kilenge, at a small town. Yeah. And uh, he was threatening us, this guy, the, the elder, and I was saying, everyone has to go. If you don't go, we'll beat you up. Mm. It's like a strike. A strike, yeah. And all of us, we went, we, we left that place, that farm at 2 o'clock in the morning. And then we be, because we were going quietly so that the boss could not. Uh, so we went all of us at uh, Kilenge. Six o'clock we are there at the office. Mm. But these people at the office there, when we presented our case, the first thing is to call the boss. Mm. And the boss came. They are even harassing us there at, uh, at the office. Yeah. Together with the people that were supposed to assist us. And they say, go back. We are not going to, to, to take you by car. Yeah. Just follow the you same walk. route. Mm. And we went back. Went back to the farm. And the guy started now harassing us every time. Who do you think you are? You are going to report me. Mm. Now I will deal with you. So it was the condition of, of, of work was unbearable. Yeah. Then we, um, two of us, we escaped at night. Mm. We have to cross a small river. We escaped. We went to Kilenge, but not to that, uh, that office anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's to look for alternative to either to go anywhere we can, we can find a different job. So from there, we escaped. We came there. We find, uh, um, when we were just looking, we find a truck. Mm. And we asked the driver of a truck, where are you? He said, no, we are, I'm going to Benguela. Benguela is a, another town, mm. Benguela. Yeah. So can you take us? No, no, we can take, I can take you. So you didn't even care where you were no, going? No, as long like as I'm you out to, to go. Uh, I'm out of this hot, hot water here. Mm. So we went to Benguela with my colleague. I, I, I remember I had only a, a blanket. My colleague had a car box, I think also he had a blanket. So the truck driver, when we came in at Benguera, he just said, uh, small boys, mm. I'm, I'm only um, driving up to here. Find your own way. Mm. So we, we got off from the car, from the truck. I remember I was walking in the street, just in the street with my, my blanket. Yeah. And then the, the car stopped. Uh, there was a white lady who was asking me, eh, you? who are you? No, I, I told her my name. Where but are langu what, what language was it's it? It's Portuguese, Portuguese. So you understood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Language. But uh, uh, not that perfect Portuguese. Mm, mm. Uh, the basic one I, I, yeah. used, I yeah. do understand at that time. Then she said, I have my sister who is looking for a servant mm. uh, or homeboy or something like that. Then I said, okay. Yeah. From there, I, I can't remember my, my, my colleague who came with me. I just got into that car, mm -hmm. and then I went with her. And she took me at, uh, at that uh, sister of her. It was a family that was working for Red Cross. Yeah. So this, these people were so good. And uh, her sister took me and started... Um, teaching me how to clean the house, how to cook, how to wash the clothes, how to iron. So I became uh, properly employed. Mm -hmm. I knew how to cook, uh, to get the food, uh, iron, clean the, 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 the house, the floor used to have a, a wood. A, mm -hmm. the, the floor is wood. Yeah. Then you have to uh, apply those... Uh, uh, polish. Yeah, polish. And they help you to polish it nicely and it's become shining. So, and then when you finish, you go and they cook. Mm -hmm. When they come, because normally their lunch is from 12 o'clock until 2. Yeah. They, from 12, when they come, they eat. From 12, uh, from 1, they sleep. 2 o'clock, they woke up. Mm -hmm. And then they go. They go for, for, for their duty. And then you wash the plates. Nicely, yeah, and uh, so they liked me, but they don't. 
They, I, I used to get a good salary, but they don't give me the money because they knew that uh, I was too young, I, I, would, I would spoil the money. Mm -hmm. So I worked there for a good time. I think uh, I worked there for some times, and I learned the Portuguese. Yeah. It was them. Mm -hmm. Everything, mm -hmm. I learned the Portuguese. But when I, I started growing up, maybe I was now looking at, at the girls. But uh, I, I, I don't go out uh, normally. Mm -hmm. What happened is when my boss is going to take a shower, I climb on a box and uh, I look at her when she's uh, <laughs> passing, passing. I look at her. <laughs> I, I did it in several locations. You were a peeping dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but one day, yeah. maybe I was too excited. I hit my, my forehead. In or the, you wanted to see it, the and then you forgot. Yeah, in the window. <laughs> and she realized that she saw me. <laughs> and she screamed, and then I, I jumped, and then I went to the kitchen. Yeah. And the, the husband was reading a newspaper in the sitting room. Mm. I went to the to the husband. He was also having a, a coffee, a, a teacup. Yeah. And then I took the teacup. I went to the kitchen. When she came running, mm. uh, covering it with a tower to the husband. Yeah. Where is the boy? Then the, the husband said, "The boy was just here. I just pick up the. Mm. He's in the kitchen. Is it? No, but I saw him. <laughs> and the, then he said, "Come, come, come." Then he. Said, where were you? I said, I was just in the kitchen. Because that <laughs> door, when you go out, yeah. the door is having a spring that it makes, it makes noise. noise yeah. But I disconnected it. <laughs> I disconnected the, 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 the spring. Immediately when I entered the kitchen, I, then I, I put it back. Yeah. No, you were to take. I said, no. Boss, you were in the sitting room. Did you hear any sound of, mm. of the spring of the, of the door? I was just there at the kitchen. I said, no, but I saw you. you. Mm. No, no, I said, not me. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not the one. And then you denied it. I denied it totally. Yeah. Then the life continued. I did not. Uh, but she, she did not. She lost the confidence. Mm. The way she's treating me is a different way. Yeah. So normally when we finish, when they finish dinner, they, they go and they watch TV. And uh, myself, what I do, when I finish washing the plates, yeah. I go in the street and I join other boys to play soccer. This is a small soccer, mm. this mm. is small. And we play, play soccer in the street and we start making noise. And remember that those are white people in that, in that town. Yeah. So when we start making noise, they just, uh, it's noise pollution. They call the police. Those days, the police used to patrol with a bicycle and a, and a, a torch. Mm. So when we saw the police coming with a bicycle, <coughs> we decided to get a stone and they throw a stone into the poli uh, uh, police officer. And you never thought you would be a police officer? Uh, never. Uh, so when we threw a stone to this police officer, mm. <coughs> he fell. When he fell with the bicycle, he stood up with the pistol. Oh, he started shooting. And we jumped in, a, in, a, in, a, in one yard nearby. Mm -hmm. But he, not knowing in that yard there were dogs. Mm -hmm. When we jumped, the dog after us, we jumped back in the street. He was already there waiting for us. The police officer was already there with yeah. Lay down everybody. Mm -hmm. All of us, all these boys, we were now down. Mm -hmm. And then the, the police van came and we were taken to the police station. We were now asked, where are you working? Every boy, mm -hmm. what, who is your boss? We, we were mentioning the name of our boss. And in the morning, we slept there. In the morning, all of the, all our bosses were called to come. Yeah. And they were identify us. Is this one? Yes, 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 this one, yes. Then my boss took me there. He said, we thought when you finish here, you go and sleep. You go and sleep, yeah. You, you, are, you are now in the street making noise. What is this? If you repeat these things, we are going to, to fire you. Mm -hmm. Then all of us, we were given it to our bosses. We started with the, our work normally. 
But uh, my my boss, the woman, does not say. Now he's he's mis trust. Mm. He, he, he she lost the trust. Yeah. One day he just said, no 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 no. I will give you your money, and, uh, and then try you to go. to find the another another one. I remember she gave me all the money. Mm -hmm. I put it in a shoebox, and, <clears throat> and I went to a place where they, they, they sell newspaper because I knew there were people working there from, from Kunene region, mm -hmm. Angola Kunene region. Yeah. They speak uh, the same language. I, I went to them, and they said I was fired. They said, um, OK, we are going to talk to our boss. And uh, we see if he, the boss will accept you. Okay. They spoke to their boss. They kept my money. And their boss said, no, no, we can employ him. But uh, to sell newspaper and the lottery. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there, were, there are um, coupons, like a lottery. Yeah. If you win, you win a lot of money. Yeah. So we started selling uh, newspapers. Uh, they call it the Journal d'Angola. Selling a newspaper, newspapers, and, and the lotteries. And the one so day, you couldn't read then? No. And no. you had never set your foot in a classroom? No. No. That okay. was it. Um, those days, people are honest. Mm. They pay you the, for the newspapers. I, newspaper. I stayed there for sometimes. But one day I find a, a couple, a couple of uh, white people, they say, no, we are looking for someone who knows how to work at home. Mm. Then I told my colleague, I said, oh, uh, it's better, uh, better going to work in, in the house than running every time you go to the bars, he's selling newspapers with this picking. Sometimes they, they throw bad word to mm. you and all those stuff. But where where would you go to stay then where you asked you were you were selling? No, no, newspapers? we were staying together with these two. Okay. They had the place where oh, we were. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were staying together mm. at the same workplace. And then when I told them, they said, No, I think it's better. Uh, it's better to go and work there. My name was uh, my name that uh, my name that uh, from my father mm. is in Nishipolai. Nishipolai. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My father, when he was baptized, is Mateus. Mm -hmm. So those where I came from, they they normally, instead of calling my name, they are calling uh, Mateus. Mm -hmm. So when I went there, at the, at, at so this before, couple, you, before you go on, at what? Point, then did you become the Tunga? No, the Tunga is, the, is my father's name. Okay, so he had two names. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That oh, okay. uh, Mateus is a, a, it's like a, a baptized. All right. But uh, the, the real name of my mm. father is the Tunga. And the family name? Yes. That, that is the family name? Yes. Okay. Now, when I went to this couple, mm -hmm. they don't want to call me this thing is It's very complicated. Mm. The name is very complicated. They said, you boy, we are going to take you to church for you to be baptized. So they took me to a pastor, mm -hmm. uh, and they said, we want this, this boy to be baptized, and the, the name should be Sebastian. They give me the name, and we are going to be his godfather. But do you remember the year when this was? Yeah, yeah, I think it was, um, that was 73. 1973. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That was 73. And then the, the pastor told them, no, the boy has to learn catechism, mm -hmm. something like a catechism. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how to read. How can I learn a catechism? Mm -hmm. Then they said, no, don't worry, we are going to give you uh, someone who uh, understands the catechism and they will yeah. translate it to you. Mm -hmm. So for one week in that lecture, the catechism. When I'm done, I came to church with them. Uh, I was questioned the uh, questions. I, I responded the questions. Mm -hmm. And then they said, you are OK now. Then they say, his name, Sebastian. That is your name. So you didn't agree to that name? You just no, said. it was just uh, given to me. Mm -hmm. 
So all the documentation in that church. So you got the documentation under the name that you were given in yes. the church. Yes. So what but kind of documentation? My name, the, the real one yeah. was also put on the document. Nishpolai. Yeah, Nishpolai. Okay. And the, the name of my father, mm. the two names of my father, mm. Mateus and then the Tunga, were put on that document. Mm. But what kind of document documents were these? It's a church, a church document. It's like a... Bapt baptism stuff. Yeah. Okay. So before before you go on, is it why there was this talk of uh, you being an Angongole? Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. And because uh, I, I yeah. lived here, I mm. lived there, I mm. lived here, I... It's like you are chattering between the family, but I lived more with my uncle here to, to Hakado. Okay. So <clears throat> we went back with the, uh, now I'm baptized, now I'm having a new name. Mm. They were happy to call me that name. So I worked with them. They were happy, they, are, they were elderly. Yeah. One day they told me that they are going to Portugal. I think they, they were going to Portugal. Mm. Because the war in Angola now, in those bushes, I think there were uh, guns and bombs, and I think they, they said they are going to Portugal. Yeah. I, I can't remember their names. From there, what I did, let me go back. From there, from Bengal, I just Take to, uh, Nami to, Nami to Namibia now. From there, I mm. came straight to Onjiva. Mm -hmm. Onjiva, Chicago. <clears throat> At Oshikango, that time, yeah. uh, uh, from Oshikango to Ondangwa, that uh, was a gravel, a gravel road. Mm -hmm. It was a totally dusty road. But instead of going to my uncle's place, I just went straight to Ondangwa. For, because I want to be recruited as a contract labor there. So you were avoiding to go back to your family? Yes. I just went straight to Ondangwa. Mm. And you were 11 then? Uh, yeah. Because it was yes. 1973, 1962, yeah. yeah. I went there mm. at Ondangwa. I had a bag of meal meal. I find some people there who are already having a okaholo. That is, normally they put it uh, when, you, are, when you, you, are, you pass all the tests, they put something like a, a number. A number, yeah. They put something like a number here. Mm. I, I find some people there from our village, okay. and they were they were going like uh, tomorrow, because they they were recruited. But did you still recognize people from your village since you never spent time there? No, no. They, people normally you 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 ask people from the village to associate with mm -hmm. and they, to stay with. They give you uh, because normally there there was no accommodation for everyone. But if you ask, are there people from Hakadu here? Yeah. Or even from Shifunga, from Angola? Mm -hmm. So you belong to both? Yes. OK. The, the, I find this one said, no, oh, no, no, we are here. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are having a lerish, but uh, we don't have more uh, maize meal. They say, I have a maize meal. Mm -hmm. Then they, they, they left the really fish, dry fish. Next day, they went. After two days, we were called. Farm, we want the boys to go and look after sheep. Mm. Then we came. Then I was like, you, 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 you are come. This time, I was, uh, I, I was chosen. Now he said, no, oh, no, no. Now you are fit. 11, yes. Yeah, yeah. Now you are, you are fit. That is 70, 73. Mm. Okay, they prepared us, the documentation, and then... Uh, they went, we went to the clinic, they tested us, we are okay. They put us on, on the bus the next day. We came to uh, Hrotfontein. In Hrotfontein, there was a, a, a someone from, from, uh, from uh, Kavango. I don't know, but he's Orukwangari speaking. Yeah. He's the one who used to call names. And when, once you come there, you are told... Listen very careful, mm -hmm. because this man is so quick in mentioning name. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't listen careful, your name will be called and you will not hear, and then you will remain. Yeah. So when we were there, we were listening very careful. It was my new name, Sebastian, they took. We were called there on a train. Yeah. 
all of us on a train the whole night. Then uh, we arrived in Windhoek in the next morning on a train. Because we arrived in the morning and we have to depart in the afternoon, in the evening, to the south. I, we all of, some of us, we, we walked from the train station here yeah. to uh, Okomboni, compound where, yeah, Katutura, yeah, 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 in yeah. Katutura there, mm. where all the contract labor people were, were housed there. Yeah. That time they were building, the, when I passed here, they were building this, uh, almost finishing, maybe final touch of the Katutura Hospital. Mm. It was so a, they under construction. They, yeah. they were making the final touches. So we went there, we spent the whole day there. We find the people from our village, they treated us. They were elders. Mm. The when they say as a small boy, they give us all what they, we need, we ate. In the afternoon, we came back at the train station. Yeah. Into the train, um, Kitmas, until Kitmas. But when we arrived in Kitmas, I think we left Saturday here. We arrived uh, Sunday there in Kitmas. Yeah. And because I was so a believe, a strong believer in the Christian with a, a, a wooden cross, a wooden cross, I was, I was a, a serious believer. Mm. Then we arrived Sunday there in the morning, and then I said, I have to go to church. Where is the church here? We don't know anybody. But then I have, uh, I said, I just go in town and I look at the cross. If the ch because the churches are identical, are identical. Yeah. I saw a building with a cross. With a cross, yeah. I went there, but I, I came late in that church. When I, 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 when I entered, I entered from the northern part. The, 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 the door is from the northern part. I entered, and I saw everybody in the church was looking at me. And to me, I thought it's because I, um, I came late. Yeah. I just sat there, and there was a, a tall white man at the, the altar there, preaching. I don't understand. It's Africans. African, yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, as long as I'm in church. So that when the time of offering came, the lady, because they don't stand up, the lady is having a small, like a small basket. He's going around, 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 around. You put in like a small basket. But she did not come where I was. But I also, I didn't have the money. And I said, oh, God, mm. it seems you, you saw really that I don't have money. Yeah. So <laughs> she went, they finished uh, the offering. Then when the, the service was done, I went back through the same door. All of those who were in the congregation, they went through a lateral door. But when I just went out, maybe some meters from the door, there came a, a tall, tall white man. And this man is just uh, wala, 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 wala. The only way that I understand is pasop. Wala, 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 pasop. Wala, wala, pasop. I said, this man has confused me with someone. Mm. I'm just coming from the church and he's, he's making me pasop, pasop. When he looked at my eyes, maybe he said, this one is just an innocent. So you used the wrong door? Yeah, no. Mm. It's a wrong church. He said, oh. you can't enter in a white church. Well, all of the people in there we, were the, white the, people. The, the white. And I, myself, I didn't realize it. Uh, from there, from Angola, where we mm. came, where mm. I was baptized, everybody, yeah. they used to be in the church, black and white. So you did not understand the political situation then? No, na time. nothing. Yes, it was a just an innocent. Mm. But when this drama at the, gate, the door was uh, happening, yeah. there was uh, two or three guys who were observing the drama. When this, this man just left me there, he just went, not knowing that this is the same pastor who was at the altar. It's the same pastor. Mm. These people were asking me, you small boy, where are you coming from? No, no, I'm coming from church. Which church? Mm. This one. Say, you are lucky. You. You're supposed to be locked up. But the church is only for, for white people. Then I started shivering, but I'm praying. Mm. 
that God has saved me. Yeah. You, you see? Then I went back. I went back to the, uh, the what is this? The, the train is, uh, station there. Mm -hmm. In the evening, we, we get into the train. We are going the south now. So the whole night, we were supposed to be dropped at a place called Konkib. Kwakheb, and that place is Kwakheb, but we normally would say Konkib. But we were sleeping in the train. So we passed the Konkib, the train stopped there, but we did not get off. So when we were on the way to Aus, because Konkib is, is before Aus, yeah. this uh, train, uh, this man in the train who checked a document came and said, Papir, what's a papir, papir? Uh, we don't understand, uh, but uh, papir, you give it a document. This guy said, you were supposed to remain to get off from Gonkip. Well, so you went, you went past where you were supposed yes. to drop off. But at the train stopped and we were sleeping. Mm -hmm. You were supposed to remain there at the Gonkip. Can I, I can drop you anywhere here. Yeah. He's threatening us, eh? But the train is in, in movement, it's yeah. moving, but it's threatening us. So when we came at the house, and I, I, I think that time was a winter. When we came at, uh, at the house, he said, get off here. You should wait uh, until I think it was a, until it was a Tuesday. And then Tuesday, when the train comes back from Luderich to, to pick you up, and they drop you where you were supposed to be dropped. When we went down, my dear, the place is cold, cold. So at the, at the, at the where the, 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 the train stops, there is this small house where normally they change. They change the train, it goes like this. Yeah. We just put up there with our blanket, but the blanket is like you are not covering it. Uh, yourself with anything. It is terrible cold. Mm -hmm. So we were there at night. They, in the house, there was a mine. I don't know what type of mine. There were a lot of people from the north who were working at that mine. Yeah. And they were informed that there are small boys there at the, at the, at the, at the, 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 the small station, house yeah. there. Mm. So they came. They were asking now, where are you from? No, we were telling them. I'm from Onelewa, Akadu, the other one, I don't know where he came from. We were only two. They look at us, we were hungry. Then they went in, in the house. There was only one shop in the house. Mm -hmm. They went there, they bought uh, a roof, uh, roof of a bread and a good drink. They brought it to us. We ate. We were now well saved, but uh, still shivering, cold. So we waited. Uh, Tuesday came, the train came. We get into the train. We went. Now we were just awake to make sure that we were dropped at the concrete. Mm. And then we were dropped there at the, at the concrete. When we came there, our boss was fi uh, waiting for us. No, no. Actually, the brother of my boss, but uh, is the boss of my colleague. Mm -hmm. Uh, we came, he was talking a lot of things, maybe asking why I didn't, we were, it's like uh, we were here waiting for you, you did not drop here, and uh, you know, maybe saying we wasted our time and so on. And uh, he's called Severan. Mm -hmm. He was called Severan with one arm. He was driving with one arm and it was the, he was driving like nobody's, maybe like Michael Schumacher on the Gravel Road. Yeah. Maybe he was angry or, and so on. We, we drove, I think it's uh, 81 kilometers from Konkin to the farm where we were. Nuihas, the, the farm is uh, Nuihas. So when we went there, uh, at his house, he yeah. just showed me, showed me. That road, you follow that road, you will find the place where other people who are working for your boss are, and they will orient you, they will tell you what to do. Yeah. He remained there. He did not even have the courtesy to, to drive up to where the, 
the others are. So, with my things, praying all the way, I went. And when I went there, I find uh, uh, these people who are working there. Uh, there was one Oshwambo speaking, the rest were Damara Nama speaking. And then uh, they oriented me and say, our boss is not here, our boss is in Cape Town, but uh, you were ordered to come and look after sheep. And this ship, the posts where the ships are, is very far, like in the mountain there. Mm. They took me there. They gave me all the, the necessary uh, amenity. It, it was a maize meal, uh, meat, sugar, coffee. And they were asking whether I needed tobacco. I don't smoke. And they gave me a single bull mail, something like a bull mail. And then they, they took me where the ships are. I remember the ships were 601. And you are the only one. I'm the only one and the dog. Mm -hmm. I went there because uh, I used to look after animals uh, since young. I liked the animals. I looked at this animal. I went there for a contractor for 18 months. The contract were either 12 or probably 6 and 18 months. Mine was 18 months. I stayed there with this sheep, and uh, in, during May, they reproduce. You have to make sure that all these lambs, they are gathered, and, and uh, the boss, will, the, 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 what is it, the foreman will come and they collect all these uh, lambs. They slaughter them. It's Karakum sheep. Yeah. I stayed there. When I was in 11 months or 12 months, I was now looking after my cattle along with the the uh, border fence with another farm. And on the other farm, there is a, I met this old man. I'm this side, he's on the other side. And he said, how are you? No, I'm fine. From where are you? No, I'm from the north. Oh, for how long have you been here? No, I, I, you know, we started talking. Mm -hmm. Then he said, have you heard what is uh, uh, um, talked about around the world? I said, no, what is that? Oh, you didn't hear anything. They say Swapo is going to launch a very destructive rocket. And all those black who are mixed up with the white, all of them, they will die. Mm. So at what point did you know anything about the party? No, I don't. I never heard. That is the first time I heard that mm. the name Swapo. Yeah. I didn't know even know what is this Swapo. Mm. Swapo is going to launch a big rocket. Then I was scared. I didn't want to die there with it. So every Friday, I have to take go to the, the farmer house to be counted, the sheep to be counted, yeah. and to eat some this is salty and the other things. So the next Friday, I went there, and I went with my all my property that I had. I, I went when I, I went to the farmhouse. And now that time my boss came also. They were now counting the, the sheep. Because I, I, I knew how to count in Portuguese. Mm -hmm. They were saying, Ian, two, Ian, three, three, whatever. Um, who, who, what was stress, stress. Then he, the boss said, the scap armor. The scap armor. When he just said the scap armor, mm -hmm. I just uh, bus like a very vampire and honey from there. Now the, 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 he looked at me. And he was talking a deep uh, African thing. Mm -hmm. Was saying, "Why? Maybe he was. Why do you want?" He said, "Vambuki, yeah, mm moi, -hmm. hey, Vambuki. Why do you want to go?" And remember, your contract is 18, uh, 18 months. You are just, I think I was in, in 12, 12 months. What do you want? Not to know, the boss does not know that I had About the, the, uh, the rocket okay. and, and so on. <laughs> then he said, no, Bambuki, because I used to get a, a 10 rand per month. Yeah. That is 10 rand. 
Then he said, no, Bambuki, more, what, what? I will add more one rand. Mm. I will increase your salary one rand. Then I said, oh, it's a big money. Let me look at it. So I went back. Yeah. And the my overall was torn everywhere. I mended here. I, since I went there, the same overall I was given. I meant, yeah, I'm, oh, I know. When you look at me, you say, ah, ah, this poor boy. And then I went back with my, with my, 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 my ship. I stayed mm -hmm. one month more, thinking the 13th 13, 13 month or 14th month. I came back again with the same story. Oh, you Vambuki, your contract is 18 months, you can't go to Vambland. Maybe saying you are breaching a contract or something like that. Then he said, no, I will take you from the, from the farm, there, from the post there. You will work with me here at the farm. Well, uh, all this uh, um, wind mill farm, repairing it here, fence there, and so on. I just stayed with, the, I think, uh, one month with him at the farmhouse working there. And one day he came uh, pleading with me. I, my sister, people who are there, they don't want to look after sheep. Maybe you can uh, go and assist, assist my sister. Uh, we will add more one rand. So 12 rand. Mm -hmm. The salary is increasing. Now. But they don't give you the money. They give the money. Until the contract, Until the contract is finished. Mm -hmm. So I accepted, I went to that farm. I can't remember the, the name, but the name is known. I was taken there, but that farm is a very bad farm. The topographic, a lot of stone, and the dirty grass that you can, you know, stuck in your, in your old overall everywhere. Mm -hmm. It is a bad, 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 bad farm. What happened? I stayed there only one month. But one ship was uh, caught by, 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 by this jackass. Mm. And they have eaten that ship. So I counted one ship is missing. But I wanted to go. I, I don't want it to be that far. So I went to the farm, uh, farmhouse. The lady, the, the lady now, the sister of my boss, was counting. We were counting it together. And she said, Ian Skapver. Then I said, no. Boss, Mrs. No, the Skap Armor. Uh, if it's like that, let's call them back again and the, the recount. Then she said, no, that's Magnin Shakini. Then I said, <laughs> Then I said, oh, but I knew one ship is, is missing. Is missing. Mm -hmm. When he said, <coughs> just he said this cup, uh, that Magini Sakini, then I said, Buzz, thank you very much, hurt, thank you very much, and hurt. Fanda. Then she said, that one was emotional. She was very emotional. Mm -hmm. She was shouting. She, was, she went in the, in the house and the, the door, bam, bam, in the door. Then I was behind the tree. I thought she wanted to get a, a gun. I, I was now, uh, when I, I hear I'm behind the tree, yeah. going around the tree. Mm -hmm. If she comes with a gun, I go around. But she was saying, terrorist, terrorist, something like that in the house. Next, next moment, she came with the, um, uh, a small bag with my money. And she was saying, I will, I will not pay your ticket to go to Vambland. I will only drop you at the Conkip mm -hmm. and you pay for your ticket because you breached the contract. But as she gave me all the money, yeah. she took, she, I climbed in the bucky and that bucky was driving like, she was so emotional, angry. She dropped me at the Conkip. At the Conkip, I bought, uh, I bought my ticket. I remember it was 12 rand. That ticket is from Conkip to, to Hrotfontein. 12 rand. I bought that. I waited for the train from Luderich. The train came. 
we came in in, in uh, Cape Mans, uh, because normally when they come in Cape Mans, they stay a day there in the evening, and then you continue. During the day, I went to the shop, now to buy my things, because normally when you get uh, your package, you should buy your blanket. I, I bought those trousers that they they, they, they were called the bottom up. Mm. You know, the bed. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I bought them, and uh, but I I was just bringing everything at the counter, not uh, comparing prices, and uh, vis a vis the man I had. When they just uh, calculated all my money the, for the, the whole contract, gone. Gone. And remember, I have to, to buy a, a, a ticket from Rotterdam then to Ondangwa mm. or Shakati. I don't have money. And I was afraid to say, no, no, some of these clothes should go back. I thought I would be beaten up. Mm. Say, why you didn't you bring you brought these things here? I just had to pay a suitcase. I bought a suitcase. I put my things in a suitcase. But I was out money now. It's lucky that in, in the train they give food. Yeah. I went to the train with my, my suitcase without no money. We sat in the evening, journey to Grotefontein. Next to me here was one boy. We were talking in, in a swamp, talking other things. Eh? Then, uh, not knowing that uh, he is also having a problem with, uh, with money. money. Then we were talking, ah, money. But he was more clever than me. He said, no, 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 no. When we get in the on day, we should go and uh, work in, uh, in, and uh, clan the time. Uh, because uh, if they catch you, they will deport you. Mm. Clan the time, how are we going to do that? No, say, when we reach in the road for day, where we are going to disembark, we just get our things and we go to the compound in the road for day. There was a compound there. Mm -hmm. So we escaped to the compound. In the compound there, we were asking the people from our village, and I know, no, I got one. Even that room is still there where we were sleeping on the floor mm. in the Hrot Fontaine. When you enter the compound, yeah. the first room on the on the left, on the floor, they said, no, we are here, but uh, there is no space you can lay on the floor. In the morning, you go and look for a job, but you don't have a document. Mm. You're, if you are unlucky and you bump into the police, they will arrest you and they will deport you. But because I spoke Portuguese, we, uh, someone advised me to go to uh, a fishing chips uh, place where the, it was uh, owned by a Portuguese family. Yeah. So when we went there, <clears throat> with my Portuguese, this woman looked at me and said, oh, no, 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 you are a good, uh, a good boy. Mm. You will, uh, I, I can get you to work here. Your work is to, to mop the, the floor and to peel uh, potatoes peel them for, for chips. So, salary, 28, 28 rand. My goodness, mm. it's a diamond mine. 28, my goodness. So we, I, we joined, we start working, we start working. Not knowing that these people whom we find there, they were stealing, they were stealing the chicken. Those box of chicken that are already prepared their frozen, frozen yeah. chicken. Yeah. What did they do? They just uh, steal the box and they put it in, in, the, in, the, in the dustbin. And then they put the rubbish on top. In the evening when they are off, mm -hmm. they take this box to the compound there and they, they start um, preparing them. They cut it. I remember this part of a chicken here, the, 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 the wheat or whatever. Uh, it's, it was a 10, 10 cent, 10 cents. Yeah. So they sell. It's a business now. Mm -hmm. People were stealing. Now I joined the stealing. Mm -hmm. How? W when I'm, I'm I'm cleaning the floor like this, there are there are stands mm -hmm. with the, uh, these uh, uh, tins. Eh? Things of beans and fish and so on. 
when the water is dirty, then you put uh, uh, one. Uh, when you are going to throw water, to throw away water, yeah. then uh, you put in the drum and the, that that's the bin. So we started the business. One guy was caught one day. Then he said, no, I'm not the only one who's stealing. Everybody here is stealing. Then the, she said, I remember she gave me even a nice trouser, the very one. Yeah. She liked me, she gave me. The, she said, even this one who are working under clandestine here, can I call the police? Then I said, no, 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 uh, don't call the police. So all of us, we were fired. When we were fired, we went to the compound, strategize again. That was December now, 74. Mm. December 74. Then we got job uh, in construction. You know that drill, that for the first time I worked to that drill, that, I don't know, I think it's a drill in yeah. the construction. Uh, one guy called Satan, is the owner of the company, is a, a buster. We start working with him uh, that, that, because we were we used to, we should have been paid per week because they might be paid per week. So in the construction, <clears throat> I was given a, 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 a constructor. Um, normally they were building, uh, we, 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 we were giving a, what is this, um, um, bricks. We climb on top, they, they lay some stands, yeah. and you stand here. The one who is constructing, uh, constructing you, they give you brick from the ground, to you get, I receive it, and I give it to him, and he is building. Yeah. That day, <clears throat> he, when he finished that line, he just went down, and he did not tell us that we should go down as well. He just pulled that... Uh, Scaffold. That, yeah, yeah, he yeah. just pulled it. And then I fell. When I fell, lucky enough, I fell uh, in between of iron. I could have uh, hit my head on the floor. But I, I got stuck. So, then I was so angry with this man. When I, I was taken, I, I was removed. When I went there, I started fighting this guy. Not knowing that the guy was more stronger than me. Then I was taught a very serious lesson. I was beaten up. But this guy, he was bigger than me. Then when he, this Satan came, the owner of the country, he said, you, these people, they have got no document. And they are troublemakers. I will fire you, you should go. We went, but we had some money. Uh, 28 that we paid here. Yeah. We know that we are stealing because some of us, they never knew that we were also stealing. They just, only because of those allegations. So we got this money. We went to the compound. Now it's a, we have a money now to buy, to pay for the ticket. Or oh, anyone who can take us to the north in December, uh, 74. When we were there, we were asking now how to escape and who will take us across the, the red line. Mm. So there was one, one person, apparently that one used to sneak out to people who are going to join the liberation struggle from, from Rotfontein. Yeah. We were introduced to them. I remember I had the nice hair. There was a, some, some treatment of our hair and they become so fine. So with this money, I had nice hair. So one day, this man said, no, 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 I can take you, provided you pay me. I don't know how much we, we pay. Well, I will take you, but we have to travel at night. But uh, I have to put you in the box. You know, this uh, long box in the back. Mm -hmm. But uh, only when we are about to, to come to Oshivelo, because the that is that was very that control was so tough. So maybe I don't know how many kilo before Shivelo we went into the box. The box are just close to one another. The, it is open like this is the car. It is open this side. But here at the back, it is closed. The box the box are closed. 
Okay. But you can, uh, for you to breathe properly, it's from, yeah, yeah, from yeah. that side. So we, when we came to Shivelo, we see just the, the, the police, the torch, because they were uh, trying to see what is in, the, in, the, in the, the car. But here you can see the lights. But we, we so quiet. And then we pass without them detecting us. Mm -hmm. Maybe just some kilometers from Oshivero, he stopped, we came out. When we came out, he drove up to Shakati. No, Shakati, I got, um, I got, uh, I got uh, a lift. I went home to my, my, my uncle's house. When I went there, that, that week when I went there, there was a, a, an activist, a swap activist, mm. called Mautamanen, our neighbor there. Yeah. He is from Okandi, and we, for, we are from Hakadu. But uh, they are just a neighbor, just a, a, it was a long distance. But he was a swap activist. When he saw some boys around the area, he called us one day. He said, uh, you know, you boys, you see other boys who used to be here, they are not here, they are gone. Where? Zambia, Tanzania, and Kenya. They went to study. And uh, I wanted to, to take you, he used to take us in the bush somewhere there at around 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the evening. And he tuned the swap radio yeah. from, uh, from, I think it was the uh, Congo Brazzaville. And they, this, in the radio, they used to sing the song, Swapo shall never, Swapo shall never be beaten by force, the region. And then the sound of guns. Mm. Then he said, all these boys who are not here, they are now trained to come and fight for their country. He, he started trying to sense, uh, what is this? Um, talking towards what is Namibia. Mm. All these things that uh, the country is colonized yeah. is opening up of, of our mind. Then he said, whoever wanted to go, next week I'm going. And I'm going with my, my, my two sons. I remember one of the sons is called Gottrip. Gottrip. Mm. Then the other one, I, I forgot. The, the daughter was called on dinner. But the daughter and the mother were not going. So they decided to go. Then I said, no, um, I have to tell my uncle that uh, I'm going with that Mauta Manene. But I cannot go with Mauta Manene without telling my father there in Nangwa. Yeah. Then we agreed. OK, we will meet in Onjiva. They go through Oshik. At that time, there was no much control in uh, 74. I remember 74 at the end, uh, they went this side. I crossed the border. I went to my father. I, I was telling him, my father, we are going to Zambia. He said, you are just arriving now. For uh, After some times, you are not here. Mm. And now you are going to Zambia. What is wrong with you? What is in your head, you person? Mm. What is the problem? Then I said, no, 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 I, I have to go. I remember telling my brother that I followed, they said, my brother, let's go. And my brother refused, he doesn't want to go. What I did, they prepared me at the home there, they prepared me, I remember saying, some of saying, no, uh, prepare a chicken for, for him, uh, let him go. Then the other one was saying, no, 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 don't prepare a chicken for the, for the boy going in this, uh, uh, what in the world uh, like this? Mm. Prepare uh, a spinach, traditional spinach, Evander. Yeah. Prepare him, Evander. So they prepared everything. Prepare everything, and then they say goodbye. Just like that. Goodbye. They, they were thinking maybe in my head is not uh, something. Something is missing. Then I went, when I came in on Jiva, I don't know where is Mautamanen, 
What will I say? Where will I find them? No communication. And um, I was staying at uh, one uh, uh, white man uh, a bit far from the, the town center. I left my suitcase there to go and look for, for Mautamane in the group. One day when I, I was just in town, I saw a group of, I think there were 10 people having luggages moving toward the north. Then I asked these people, these people, where are they going? He said, no, 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 those are coming from Ojoni. They are maybe going to Zambia. Then he said, okay, this is the people I wanted. I went, I just followed them. I saw the office. When we went there, the, the, the head of that group was asked by the people whom we find there. You know who are the people who, whom we find there? It was uh, uh, David, David Shimuno, uh, Kanana. I don't know Kanana, the other name, but uh, Kanana. Then he was asked by them, oh, welcome. Where are you coming from? No, no, we are coming from Ojoni. How many are you? No, we are 10. When we were counted, we were 11. They said, no, no, you are 11. Then they said, no, no, this one, we don't know. And maybe he just joined us. Said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I'm part of a group that uh, was led by Mauta Manene, and uh, I can't find them. Then they said, no, Mauta Manene is already gone. So they asked us, do you have money? This, uh, others, some of them, they say, yeah, we have money. Myself, I don't have money. And one guy who is a beautiful lady, well-built, he said, no, 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 I have a lot of money. And I, I can pay for all of you. I, I can even leave some money for the office if you don't have, if they don't have money. Okay. Anybody speaks Portuguese? They don't say, yes, I speak Portuguese. Then uh, I don't know whether it's David Shimino or, or Kanana who said, yeah, we will give you a task to lead this team, translate for them. <laughs> but you are going tomorrow. Translate it to them, but remember the names we are going to give you. You are going by a bus, and then you go to Vila da Ponte. Vila da Ponte, you go to um, a, a place called, uh, today is uh, called Minonge. It is Serpa Pindu. You go to a, a town called Serpa Pindu. In Serpa Pindu, you will find a person called Kapanya. So we went, I was translating for them. But when we were, we were entering the bus, because we were singing a revolutionary song, the wind of change. It was just a revolutionary. But did you understand all these uh, things? Or not in Oswamba. This, this, all the songs, now the spirit of the revolution is coming now in. Mm. And we were singing in Oswamba. This is where our slogan. Mm. Eh? Uh, and then when we were just entering in the bus, the lady that was with this man with a lot of money, the parents came to, to look for her. When she was just entering the bus, the mother came shouting, my daughter, you can't go anywhere, you can't cross a river, you can't. It is a taboo, you can't. When she just laid the, the hand to the, the girl who was going into the bus, I don't know whether it's uh, David or, or Kanana took a pistol and he just showed the, the woman. Mm -hmm. So the woman just fell and collapsed. We saw a man who was also came to assist with the woman, running like nobody's business in a shot. Mm -hmm. He was behind a pole, electrical pole. He was running like a, like a medical. We were just singing, we get into the bus. The lady was with this man who was powerful in the pocket. 
we got, we got into the bus. We drove, singing. We came to Vira da Ponte, we get a train to the Vira da Ponte. The train, uh, Serpa Pindu, we slept in a hotel. I don't know who paid. And then they led us at the camp the way the other people were. They were there for three months. They were waiting to go and cross to go to Zambia. We went there. There were some huts, some places where to stay. The beds were made of grass. And there were a lot of ulipi. It's called ulipi. Small insects. Lice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like lice, but they call okay. it ulipi. You can't sleep at night. Three things biting you every night. And these people were telling us, we stayed here for three months. What can we do? So, but we stayed only one week. And then we got into the bus. Mm -hmm. In that bus where we were, in my, because I think it's two buses or three buses, but in the bus where I was, we, we traveled together with the, uh, one commander called Lieutenant Mawila. And the Lieutenant Mawila was brainwashing me because they wanted someone who speaks Portuguese. Because all of us, the, the young one, we were supposed to go to Zambia or to wherever. Mm -hmm. But he was brainwashing me, say, those people are going to Zambia or Tanzania, wherever. Those are coward people. Can you see this gun? There was a a, a machine gun. Yeah. This is the machine gun for people who want to fight. And the men should not run to school. You have to. You will, you can even have yours. He was the whole the whole journey. So we came to a place called Onyangwe. Onyangwe or Munyangwe. At that place, mm -hmm. we were sorted out now. They say those who are, who are going to school, who wanted to go and who came for study and uh, so forth, stay this side. Those who, went, who came to go and fight and liberate the country, this side. I think I'm the only young one who went that side. All the, the elders, one big man, they went this side. And they, I'm also that side. So you were wanted to fight? To fight. Mm -hmm. Because I was lectured properly during the journey. Yeah. So I remember... We went we, uh, from that place called Omunyangwe. We went with a, a, a small truck, those trucks that uh, transport uh, timber. It's not, it, it does not have a, a carrying a box. The only box is that flat one. Yeah. And all of us, we were seated uh, on that, and the road was, was very rough, rough. So we went up to a place called Okaseresau. Okaseresau is where this man normally get his, probably get his uh, timbers after they were, they were cut somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it's where he, he also assisted to drop the logistic for Swapo, like maize meal and the other logistic. Mm -hmm. When he comes from Mnyangwe or wherever, the, <coughs> the assistants are dropped there mm -hmm. at Okaseresau. Mm -hmm. We slept, but during the night around maybe 12 o'clock, the, 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 the store where this, uh, these materials are kept, it caught fire. But when we, when we came there, we met another group which is coming from Okasapa. Okasapa is the training center where we were also going. Yeah. But they came to collect a nice meal to take to Okasapa by, by road. So the warehouse got to fire. Now they were suspecting us. Is this group that uh, just arrived? They are the one who put, the, they are saboteurs. They were sent by the Boers to, to, to sabotage. We woke up, we started singing, and now we say no. One lady, lucky enough one lady, saw the man because he was a, Blowing the the the, 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 the fire mm -hmm. to, to to touch the, but it was having a like a, the face was a bit covered, but one lady saw the, the guy, from our group. Mm -hmm. He said, "No, 
You are the one who has sent because we know who was touching this. Then in the middle of the night, line up, parade. And then the lady say, is this man. He was sorted out. I don't know who, I cannot tell how he was dealt mm. that. But you never that got day, to see him again. Not sleep. Mm. We were so angry, we, were, we thought even we were betrayed. Maybe we are not going where really Swapo is. We were singing the whole night until the morning. And in the morning, they told us, let's go. With our things, we started moving to Kasapa now. Kasapa is very far. I almost threw away my, 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 my uh, suitcase. Bad. Mm. We crossed the river. This river is very dangerous. And then we were moving. Moving, moving. One lady said, no, no. Uh, don't throw away your suitcase. I will assist you. The lady. And she assisted me. Not knowing we were just near, near now. When I was really tired. Mm. So when we came there, I took a supper, we arrived there. They greeted us, they received us, and they say, everyone here, you have to change the name. Because we don't know who is following you, sent by the enemy. Mm -hmm. You have to change the name. From nowhere in my mind, I say myself, I taught her. Galola. I taught her. Mm. I taught her. <laughs> I don't know what came, <laughs> but I remember at, at somewhere there at my village, there was someone. Mm. I thought Akaro, who knows how to, to, to dance a ngama. Mm. A ngama. In, and <laughs> when he, he, he danced very well a ngama. Yeah. And he used to work in the horse bay. Mm. And when he started dancing, people say, yo, I'm by over. And uh, then I thought Akaro. Akaro, I don't know where I got it. So that became your war name? Yes. OK. Everyone who was in the struggle, mm. uh, uh, when at the battlefield, uh, wherever, yeah. if you say, I thought Akarola, I think I'm the only one, I thought Akarola. Everyone knows me there. Mm. And even when they, we meet in the street and say, I thought uh, I know that this one. Mm. He, uh, was, he was there. Yeah. And even it would be a problem if, if I would have died in the struggle there mm. while I was a soldier. Yeah. People only knew I thought Akarola. And my family, nobody. Nobody know the name, you know? So we went in Kasapa, we find many people there, the Nakatas, the Mbungangas, the Hudonjapas. The... We find all these commanders, the Kalola, Mgiringiri, Karunga Konjafa, Kapuleko, all these uh, commanders. Mm. We find them there. Ngundwani, Ngundwani was a, yeah, he was instructor of artillery. So we went there, changed the name. We were put where we we were youth. Now the youth were put in different areas. Yeah, the elders were put. In. If you are married, you are given a place with your with your wife, but uh, not your concubine or girlfriend. No, mm. only the the wife. The, the arrangement were good. If you are married. <laughs> So that was in Zambia? No, no, Angola. In Angola, okay. Angola, Angola. So you never got to leave Angola? No, no, no. no. Okay. Mm -hmm. But other youth, they, they left. They went, yeah. We left at the, the Mnyangwe. They waited for the train. They went to Zambia. So in Okasapa, we started the training. Training. I remember they used to say, um, uh, it's a skillet arm. Judo, political science, all this we were taught now in Kasapa there. Mm -hmm. uh, there is um, these people. When we came in Kasapa, these people they they knew that um, we used to hear that uh, people are hooked, and when you are hooked, no no bullet will go through you. So and it was a it was a common mm. you know, common. So one day we were all called, we were told to line up. 
So we see a, a, something like a drama with a, with a lot of rubbish and, and fire and smoke. <laughs> the smoke. Yeah. And say today you are going now to be, I forgot the word in, in, in English. You are going now to be, to be very empowered, to be extra power now. Mm. So the drum is like, it is a, like the here. We are in the line now. You are told, you just bow, you bow, and you go. You are okay. caught now, you are <laughs> <laughs> So you had to inhale the smoke. Yeah. But uh, what exactly was in this no, uh, small is, smoke? That is, that is for, for people just to... For you to, to be, have conf you confidence, nothing, yeah, yeah. There's okay. nothing uh, extra, extraordinary. Mm. So after that process, then it's training, 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 training. We were told now how to bath and drink water in a river without the enemy being uh, without the enemy detecting you. Mm. What you do, the river was. Uh, at a sloppy. Yeah. And you have to crawl because crawling is one of the training. You have to crawl up to the river. You go under the river, just at the edge. At the same time, you drink. And when you come out to wet, it's like you are also taking a shower. Yeah. And you crawl back. While the enemy is trying to find whether there are people standing there. The gorillas, they have already drunk water, but they go and then they are gone. Mm. So after training, where, where were you deployed, deployed? The last day of my training, I was called to a place called Onjango. Mm. Onjango is like a room like this. Eh? It's like a meeting hall, yeah. Onjango. Mm -hmm. And um, I, when I went there, I find Nakada, I find all the commanders, even our Onjango. And I was told, your training is now done. Yeah. Nakata was telling me, we are going to assign you a difficult job, and you have to make sure that you, you, you behave as a, a trained soldier. And that task, you are going to, to, to guard this man. You will be a bodyguard of this man. And uh, you guard him, you translate for him. And which man was the that? Hauru Njaba. Okay. Ilonga. Mm -hmm. uh, was a captain, Hauru Njaba. And if he is shot in any battle, mm -hmm. whether dead or injured, we want his body here in the Kasapa. And if, he, if you, you leave that body wherever, you will be the first, the prime suspect. Mm -hmm. When I look at him, the man is so tall. I say, I cannot even lift this, this person up. How will I? My goodness. But you have to comply. That is this way. Otherwise, they will say you are sent by the board. Mm -hmm. I, I accepted the task. And we started now with the Oro Java mission. Mission, confidential, secret missions. And we only walk at night. Six o'clock in the evening, we go. We go and do whatever we do. And we have a, one pair of uniform, one pair of civilian clothes. When the situation changes, because the, the war there is a, when the situation changes, you, you are in civilian. You are like a normal person there. Yeah. When it is okay, you put on a uniform. So, Holy Jabba used to go and negotiate with, the, with UNITA because UNITA confiscated firearms from our people when they came from Zambia. Say, you are crossing in Angola with the firearm. Yeah. Uh, we confiscated all the firearms. 
Maybe they left a few, because I remember in Okasapa there was a, a, an artillery, B-10. The B-10 was there because uh, during the lecture. We, but uh, when we go there, I translate. Every time they just say, the chef minister, the chief is not here. Every time we go there, they don't want to do us a fire. Maybe they are fire, they fire arm, they even deploy them to somewhere else. Every time we go. So I used to carry the bag. That bag is a Russian made bag. Everything of ours is in that bag. Mm -hmm. Orojaba is just having a, a, a pistol and a radio. He understands English. I don't understand English. And uh, I have uh, the AK 47. The magazine that you put here, and the you carry in the in the in the in the, in the stomach or whatever, and then the the bag. We we, we hit the road or the path. There is one river which is very dangerous called Wungu Wungu. To cross that river is very very dangerous. And the, but the Angolans who are there, they are very good. They used to, with a canoe, even if we are many, they, they assist us to cross. But one day, uh, we came with Zauron Jabba. Um, we find a, a team of uh, our soldiers coming from Okasapa. <coughs> now they were, they were being assisted. But I saw one of my colleagues, or our colleague, he, that thing uh, capsized, I don't know. We just saw him going. Mm, yeah. Now, uh, IG, it's a long, interesting story. I wanted you to get to the war, war part so that people can understand yeah. uh, when you went to train and um, the other things that you did out, out uh, there. But for the sake of time, let us, let us come back. Uh, you joined the police force, yeah. right? And um, can you take us briefly through the steps after you had uh, joined the police, the police force? Yeah, because when I came from school, mm. I, because it I was came. then during that uh, point, I think I need to seek clear clarity. You had never stepped into a classroom until you I got training to. and all these other things. So at what point exactly? Did you have an opportunity to step into a class a classroom? When we when we were deployed it was Orange Yeah. We went to different missions and uh, we up, up to we, uh, up to we came up to Could you the write Northern, then? The could Northern. you write then? No, not yet. You could you couldn't even uh, no. read. No. We came to the northern front. Mm. When we came to the northern front, yeah. I, I used to translate uh, because at the north of France, first we have some base. Some bases are temporary. Mm -hmm. uh, today you are Make here, shift, tomorrow yeah. they are there. Yeah. And the, the exodus of people started coming from from home. Mm. They there were many children and the women and the older people. Yeah. So, I I happened to be in a meeting a meeting where I was translating between the Angolans and the, the Namibian commanders yeah. on the issue of Kasinga. Mm -hmm. Because uh, President Semnyoma uh, uh, met uh, with the uh, Agutrin NATO, and with the report that he used to receive it to say, there are a lot of civilian killed with the soldiers. Mm. And it's dangerous when the camps are, are attacked. So they agreed that uh, a, a, a place, a safer place for all this group of people yeah. should be found. So I was in a meeting translating that um, uh, uh, Angolans the soldiers, they came, mm -hmm. FAPLAS, they came with a helicopter, and they came to meet our commanders, just to tell the commander that um, the government of Angola has allocated a, a, a place where all these people, first the, mis the message was, a place for all of you who are at the, at the front line, you should go back 200 kilometers almost, mm -hmm. 250 that is on the other side of the border. Yeah, yeah, in, in Angola. Yeah. I remember Nakada saying, uh, tell them that we are not going to retreat to go to 200 kilometers away. 
tell them then i, I said uh, then he also went in, uh, on saying our soldiers are inside the country mm. we are we are going to the front line to fight we can't go 200 kilometers there tell them that if our soldier comes from inside how are we going to supply them with ammunition and so on then i i, I translated then uh, this angolan uh, soldier was saying are you defying the order of your president and the president of the republic of angola are you uh, are you a member of uh, uh, swap of sem nyoma or you are a member of swap of bakomuta mm. was nakada was so angry and he said tell them not to insult us we are we are member of swap of sem nyoma and they should not ask us those provocative questions of course you don't uh, uh, when the meeting is so hot yeah you, if you, when you are translating you need to make sure that you you calm the tension you don't pass that anger to this one mm -hmm. say no no the commander is saying we have people inside the country yeah. we have to supply them with equipment mm -hmm. it's difficult for us to go far from if people are injured inside the country how are we going to att attend to them yeah then he said, we are, the, the, the Angolan soldier now was saying, look, we are going to give you time, all of you to get out from. And Nakata stood on his, his. Then he said, the Angolan said, if you don't move from those uh, jungles or bush, we are going to start bombing. Because Unita is also in those, in those bushes. Yeah. Yeah. Nakata was saying, that one you can't translate because you just you just repeat the same rhetoric yeah. because this one is a, it could cause a problem. Mm. You are someone's country and you are saying you go to go It's like if you provoke us. Yeah, we are going to hit back. You don't translate those things. You go around it yeah. uh, nicely, massage it. Okay. And then they, they left without an agreement. They went to Rwanda, they gave the report. <coughs> and uh, when they gave the report, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> just within a week, for the first time, President Sidney Yoma and the chairman, uh, Swapo chairman in Merolo, they came. Mm -hmm. First time they come to the northern front. Yeah. Because they were told those people are defying uh, your order. So Sebni Yoma came, we went to, to correct him from Oshangongo. Mm -hmm. They came with a, a small plane in Oshangongo, we went there. No matter I go with the, the commanders to translate when everybody. But when we went there, they had uh, another translator. Yeah. So we came with the Semnyoma. All the commanders at the battlefield were, were gathered in, in one base. I can't remember whether it's Anime or, or, or Anime or, or, or Narumono. Or Anime or Oluma. Yeah. Uh, one of the bases. So they were gathered there. Uh, President Semnyoma came and uh, was now explaining to say no. What we agreed with the Angolan uh, government and the particularly with the uh, President Agustu Neto is that all the vulnerable people should move from the battlefield because they were uh, close to the, to the enemy. Yeah. And now all the commanders were now clapping hand that they were happy mm -hmm. that now this is the message we wanted. So, then all everybody was now taken into Kasinga. When they were taken to Kasinga, Kasinga needed an administration uh, set up. So they, they got all these guys who, who are learned, those who know how to read, who speak To read English. and write and speak English yeah, as well. Yeah, good. You know, the, the, the <clears throat> uh, I remember all these guys, uh, Uhuru, I remember the Uhuru, the, the, yeah, many of them. So they were attached to Kashinga. 
But it so happened that they were not enough. Then they sent a team to, go to, to the battlefield to get other people. And then I was also identified. They think because I speak Portuguese, they, th they thought I also know how to read to and read write. And write. So that time you couldn't read or no, write? No, nothing. I was proud to be a soldier. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like uh, those people who are learned, they are sometimes cowards. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a belief. Yeah. So I was identified. We were, I think we were 11. Mm -hmm. I remember <clears throat> it's, um, we were it's Lutatu, it's Ngundwani, it's Awal, it's, uh, I, think, uh, I think it's Ponele. Uh, we were about 11. We were identified and we were taken into Kasinga. Yeah. <clears throat> In Kasinga, one week, all my colleagues were given functioning offices and responsibility. Mm. I'm the only one who I just wandering around. Because when you leave the battlefield, you, you leave the, your, your gun there. Mm. I'm the only one. What is going on here? One, one of my colleagues came and said, hey, people realize that you don't know how to read. <laughs> you can't write as well. <laughs> Then I said, but I'm a soldier. Mm. I, I, I think I should be given an office. So they know in the office, you have to write and read. You can't just be there looking in the roof yeah. of an office. So it's the way I said, oh, if I don't know how to read, mm. I cannot be given an office. No, no, no. And there's some people, they heard about the story. That, some you, of, could, that they, you can't yeah. read or write. And they say that I was so disappointed. They started with me, saying, don't worry, boys. Um, you will start, we will start dealing with you, writing on the ground, A, B, C, D, Nikasenka. Mm -hmm. A, B, C, D, and so on. But uh, before that, I was now given a task of, uh, as a, I was placed as a bodyguard of General Dimo Amambo. Uh, because uh, they, they say, the only thing he knows is a guarding, it's a bodyguard. Put him at a demo. I, I was guarding a demo. And it, the writing thing was abandoned. No, no. Mm. Uh, when uh, demo used to receive some class, I think political class given by one, one of his uh, Uhuru. Yeah. And while they are busy there, uh, um, some, some people are busy with me here. But writing on the ground. With your finger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With my finger. Nice scent. Uh, a, B, C, D. And then we come to my name. Mm. And we come to other things. Then one day, Dimo Amambo, who is uh, so rest in peace, went in a mission to Wambo. And uh, all of us, the bodyguard, we could not go with him. I yeah. was left. At, at, to guard the house in, in Kasinga. And not knowing that the Dr. Indongo, his, 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 his soul rest in peace, Dr. Indongo, mm -hmm. who was the physicist of President Semi Yoma, yeah. was given a task to go and negotiate with the Angolan government at a place called Onjamba. Onjamba. Mm -hmm. So that uh, Angola, the Angolan government give, uh, give Swapo that area, a part of that area, to be converted into an educational center. Mm -hmm. Education center. Yeah. Because there were too many children in Kasinga to take these children there. But then he had a problem to, to negotiate with the Angolan because there was nobody. He, did, he doesn't understand Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Then they say, I thought he's around there. Get a daughter. So, but I was I was afraid if a demon comes and I'm not here, yeah. it's a problem. The command structure, military discipline. But then, I had to go with the, uh, uh, in Dongo at uh, at Onjaba. and that was the golden opportunity in my life, because when we went there, I translated everything went well. We were given the sender. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, when uh, Dr. Ndong was going back to Kasinga, he said, I thought that you were not going to Kasinga with me. Otherwise, Dino will not release you yeah. because I still have many things to do. You remain in Nanjaba. I'm the first person to come in Nanjaba. And in Nanjaba, I was there in uniform, and some of the teachers, they, they really wanted me to, to study. Some of the teachers, they were encouraging me, you have to study, and so on. They were teaching me, they just like as they were doing in Kasinga, but I'm having my gun and the uniform. And then there come a time that uh, I should now join a formal education. Mm. But uh, my, my level, uh, like those children who are in, under the tree, uh, who are writing Still on, writing on the, the ground. On the ground. Now to be in those children with your uniform, with your gun. And even the teachers, some of the teachers, they will complain. Oh, a student, other students are uh, in uniform, he's in, uh, this is school uniform. Mm -hmm. He's in a military uniform and the gun here. And then they say, no. One teacher called, uh, he said, it was a pastor called uh, Ngatanga. Natanga was told, maybe was given the task to deal with this boy accordingly and uh, teach him. But do you remember how, how, how old you were, you were then? Yeah? Your age then? Um, I think that by that time now I'm around 15. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then he said, uh, he was told that this, this was a, a kettle header. If you want him to grasp, Properly things. Give him an example of uh, something related to Keto. I remember the first day he taught me a, a, a cow. The first day he taught me a cow in English. Mm -hmm. he, he started to say, today we are going to learn some animals. And it was about a cow. Yeah. And he was talking in Oswambo. Mm -hmm. Today we are going to learn something, animals in English. And he says, boom, boom, <laughs> cow, cow, bongo be, bongo be. Mm. That thing, I will never forget it. <laughs> it, it, it. It got stuck in my head. Boom, bongo be, cow, cow. So then he started with me. We started until I know how to write my name. I, I remember when the, the teachers in, the, in, the, in their house, they were telling me, they were teaching me about uh, these things of articles. And uh, Apparently, there was a, a, a old man who had uh, misplaced his uh, glasses. Yeah. He was saying, where are my glasses? On the table? under the table, at the window. Oh, they are on my head. You know? Mm -hmm. He's teaching now on, the under, pre the prepositions. Mm. Those things I remember. And I, I started. When I started, then they said, um, because our commander was green with Matongo. I, I was always afraid for him not to, to find the mini uniform. Mm. But maybe they negotiated. Then I had to drop uniform. And then, then I joined the formal structure. Now I was given a, a school uniform. Yeah. And uh, I started grade one. In grade one, I became the second at the end of the, 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 the term. Yeah. I became the second. A, a certain lady called to Kelt to, Kel to Waitel or Kelt. Always she's the first. In the second, um, and, and the, in the grade two, I became the second. This girl is just uh, every time. Mm, the first one. And it seems we used to pass three, two times a year. I'm not too, in a year. I'm not too sure. But when I was in grade three, Kasinga was attacked. Kasinga was attacked, and then uh, Dr. Ndongo was going to a meeting in Kasinga that day. This driver, Nesimus or whatever, I don't know where he is. I saw him once. He went, he drove them. 
not the doctor in but a Kanyemba, the, the principal of the school. Yeah. Kanyemba was going to a meeting in Kasinga. But maybe when they were just about to, to arrive at Kasinga, they saw the bombardment of Kasinga, jet fighters, it was a confusion. And the, the one rocket was was shelled on, on at, at their car. Mm -hmm. And then they jumped, all of them, they jumped in the car, then they, they ran in the driver, turned around, and then he came to to Kasinga to, not Kasinga, to Njaba to tell, to tell people that uh, there is fire there. And he said his eyes cannot see properly now because that, that uh, rocket, yeah. it's some, there is some smoke that affected his eye. He cannot explain. And then the teacher, the principal, the, the, the other teachers then, they say, uh, I told her, we will give you two other, uh, two people, you should drive it to Kasinga. And so you could, find out you could also drive, yes, drive it at right. that, that, that point. They gave me that ambulance, it's a Land Rover, mm -hmm. it's a hosp for hospital. We drove with three of us. I remember one of them, uh, one of the guys called Swapo, mm -hmm. was he sitting, the, 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 there was a, a, a tire on the, on the bonnet. Yeah. So this is Swapo was sitting in the, in the tire with a firearm. Mm -hmm. He was driving, the other one was driving with me. And we drove to Kasinga. When we were just arriving in one, at the, one of the villages in the northern part, People are just running, and children are crying. This, this one from this side, you cannot ask anybody. But you see the, 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 you know, the jet fighters. Mm. You see them, even going in the direction of Onjaba. We were even thinking that they are going to bomb Onjaba. They are just, you know, uh, hovering everywhere. But the people are crying, everybody. Then we had, we had just to go back. Mm -hmm. We had to go back immediately. I came in on Jabba. When he came in on Jabba, I had to tell the, the, the school principal, and not the school principal, the teachers, that we should withdraw the children from on Jabba. Because those, 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 uh, those uh, uh, what is this, jet fighter, they might come here. Mm -hmm. Children were taken out from on Jabba. Send it to a certain place in the some somewhere in the bush there, and uh, yeah, we were there waiting. Before soldiers from our training, Ainyeko, mm -hmm. were sent to come and uh, assist in the Kashinga. So in the afternoon there, we were told all those people who survived in Kashinga, some of them they were seen in those village, Angolan village. Some were wounded, some have no shoes. It is terrible. Yeah. They say, I thought, uh, go and uh, hand it to them, everybody, transport them. Then I went, I, I asking the Angolans, some are here, some are there, some are here, children, and I transported them, brought them to Onjaba, Onjaba, they are put in the train, Lubango. So I was now in a, a grade three, very poor grade three during that time. So Kasinga, people left everyone. We went to, to Lubango. I remember uh, we arrived in uh, Lubango at a place called Ngombase. And then from Ngombase, we were taken to Shivemba. Uh, Shivemba, maybe the world now was informed that there was a Massacre in Angola, and uh, Swapo is asking assistance from the world, and uh, you know. <laughs> While we were there, maybe Cuba offered herself to assist. They wanted uh, maybe 600 survivors from Kasinga. Mm -hmm. And they wanted those mm -hmm. who are having a grade five to go to to Cuba. And you had grade three. Yeah, poor grade three. <laughs> then there was maybe a need for someone who understands Portuguese to go with the children because Spanish and Portuguese, yeah. they are cousins. Mm -hmm. Now some teacher are saying, no, I thought I should go with the children. Apart from being a, a commander, I know Portuguese, 
he should go with the children. Then some teacher say, no, the requirement of saying a grade five. He does not have a grade five. No, they were fighting. Eh? Maybe I won't like Then I was sent with the children to Cuba. Cuba. That was in 1978. 1978. Okay. 1978. We arrive in Cuba. I think uh, grade five. I have to be put. I had to be put five. in grade five. So you were first tracked. Grade five. In grade five, I became the second. Hmm. But the difficulties to understand my writing. Then a special class was created. I, I remember we were two, for people to understand the, uh, how, what are we writing. A special class hmm. was, then we went through a special class. And then I did not, go to grade six after, after grade five. Yeah. They sent me straight to grade seven. So you skipped grade four yeah. and grade six. Yes. All right. Then in grade, in grade seven, then I had uh, some problems with mathematics and the formulas, because you start now with the chemistry and the physics. Mm -hmm. And those formulas, uh, these long formulas and the mathematics, it was a problem because the basic in is grade six. Yeah. That I have is a skip. So you had skip that. Yeah, it was a say hard. But then I had I had my colleagues like the Esther Mombola and and the Nuyoma and, and the Rosaria Kayuwa. They were pushing me. They were taking me really. They were really because they were those ones. They were brilliant in mathematics. Mm. I passed. This time I was no longer the second. I don't know. Um, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the mix. Yeah, yeah. I was mm. in the mix there. But I was good in when it comes to history and all those type of things. Um, things related to politics and uh, grade eight. I passed grade nine. I passed. In grade 10 is where they choose who is going to uh, polytechnic mm -hmm. to technical school, yeah. and who's going to university. And then my teacher, um, uh, Asher Mbika, our English teacher, because we had also our teacher that are teaching us English apart from Spanish, yeah. and the history of Namibia. Well, we are history of the world is in Spanish. So they said, those who are going to university, I was one of them. Mm. Lucky. I was one of those who are going to university. Then, when I was in, in uh, not, not from grade 10, first grade 10, you go to grade 11 and the grade 12. Yeah. After grade 12 is when you go to university. So we were selected from grade 10 to grade 11. But when I was in grade 11 to grade 12, um, uh, Fidel Castro one day came to visit us. Normally, often mm. he used to visit us. And uh, the first day, when we, the first time when we arrived in, in Cuba, when he came to our school, um, many children, they didn't know Spanish. And he wanted to talk to us. And uh, he said, no, I think uh, I thought I can translate. Because in, 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 in Angola, we met Many times with the Cuban soldiers. Yeah. And we exchanged the. Then I was translating it for him. For Fidel Castro. For Fidel Castro. Mm. And the children, they understood. But I, I was translating in, 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 in our language because I didn't know good mm. English. Mm. In our local language. And there's maybe some English word I, I can't remember. And then Fidel was happy. The next time when he came, he said, Sebastian, you should go and study um, political economy. Well, our chief representative, swap representative, that is Helmut Angula at that time, mm -hmm. he said, no, I think you are good for journalism. Mm -hmm. you, go and, you should go and study journalism. Now I, I was saying, which one now I should go? Which field now I should take? So when we finished grade 12, 
I decided to go to political economy, uh, which I was advised to take by uh, Commandant the, the Chief. I remember I went to the, the, that faculty of political economy with the, uh, Shanika Kakeke. Mm -hmm. Kakeke was coming from the, the, the mission, uh, the, our permanent mission. Yeah. So we joined the, at the, at the, at the, at the faculty of uh, political economy. Hey, but the mathematics was, uh, was hitting me hard there. I remember one day, the first day when we entered in the class, the, the teacher, the lecturer was uh, testing us. Mm. And when I looked at the California, I thought, <laughs> I know this one. I stood up. Mm. When I stood up, I went there. <laughs> I go to two, because two means zero. Yeah. So, that, but I was there for some months, and then uh, one friend from Congo Brazzaville said, because I, in the island I was known very well because of that relationship with yeah. Fidel. And Fidel, so yeah. He said, no, you should not waste the time of the political economy. Come to the, the law faculty. Mm. You should change. Then I changed. I was accepted. I went to, learn, to the law faculty. To law, yeah. And then I, I started. Started seriously. But it was a happy you have to read a lot, mm. lot of books. And uh, I finished. But uh, then when, when I was in grade, in the uh, th uh, third year, yeah. 89. Uh, 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 campaign for election. And then uh, Swapo and the, the world say people should go and they participate in the electoral campaign. Yeah. And uh, uh, what is this? Um, election. Uh, electoral, no? Political campaign in the, in the elections. So we came, all of us, those who are doing medicine, they were told to remain. We came, I was deployed to Angwena there. Now, because I was in the third year, I was advising the team that was deployed with uh, uh, G23. 20, uh, yeah. That was a, a electoral law. Eh? Fair election, without intimidation, uh, fair campaign, and so on. So we were campaigning, campaigning. We were going around on foot. Then uh, we were given a bicycle. The bicycle were, no, were not having a spare. If it becomes flat, you drop it and uh, you go on. Until uh, election finished and uh, we won. But when we left Cuba, Fidel Castro was saying, you go in the elect properly. If you elect it properly, you will come and continue your study. Yeah. So that was our message from Fidel Castro. And we came, we campaigned, we uh, voted correctly. Co correctly. Mm -hmm. So then I went back. I started the uh, fourth year, uh, fifth year. Yeah. After finishing five years, I postgraduate in international maritime law. International maritime, maritime law. Yeah, I, I was starting with this uh, in the national public law, but uh, focusing more on maritime law. And then, uh, 93 I came, I used to walk from Katutura in town here looking for a job. And it was hard. I remember the shoe, my, the shoe, my shoes worn off because I used to walk, coming in nothing. But when I came, I put my, my applications in the home affairs. I put my application there, and then I, I didn't know people here. Uh, Dimo Amambo arranged the uh, place where I, I can stay. But then the uh, condition was, uh, then I, I went to Helmut Angula. Helmut Angula gave me where I can stay with uh, Anna. And uh, while I'm there, they were saying, there is a post in Ruderich of uh, um, special fishery inspector, mm. special fishery inspector in, in Luderich. Then when I went to uh, uh, Commander Elmo Tangula, 
telling him that I have to move to Lugo. He said, no, 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 no. There is a course that is coming in the Ministry of Fishery um, to study the Fishery, fishery Act. Yeah. Why can't you participate in that course? And they probably after that, you will be better deployed. Mm. So we participated in the course on the, uh, this, uh, the Fishery Act. Um, of course, it's, it's a law related. It was easy for us. For me, I passed, and then I had to be deployed in Wolves Bay as a permanent fishery inspector. No okay. more special fishery inspector. Mm -hmm. And now in Wolves Bay, that time Wolves Bay was in South Africa, uh, under yeah, South Africa. Yeah. Now I don't know anybody in 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 in, in Wolves Bay. Then. Um, um, uh, Dimo Amambo and uh, Tateka Tanga, the Tateka Tanga, where I was staying, they 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 spoke to one family there, of in, in Jeveve, Jeveve. No, this uh, uh, young man wants uh, uh, got a post there. Please try to accommodate him. Yeah. So I went there. In the house, there was no no, no space. I had to sleep on the sofa. Uh, the chauffeur in the sitting room. But I uh, always have to sleep when they are finished watching TV, around 11 there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when they are going to sleep, then I, uh, it's when I sleep. And I have to wake up 6 o'clock to go and get the car, the transport to go to the harbor, to the fishery, to the, to the factories. Yeah. Because we are monitoring the, the, the process there in the, in the factories. Maybe in the factory, I, I worked... Only some weeks, then I was deployed in the uh, the sea, the midwater, mm. where there are vessels, the trawlers and and so on, to go and uh, count them. Because some of the some of these vessels they go and they catch fish. Yeah. When they come, fish are packaged. And uh, when they come, they don't they don't go uh, offshore. They just uh, trans. Uh, uh, what is this? They transferred. Yeah, yeah. The cargo will come from this one to mm. the other one that is going to export. And we have to count now. First, the type of fish, and then uh, you, you count the box. Mm. Because that is the revenue of government. So I was, but the, the first day when I went there, my dear, this is a, 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 a ladder. It's a ladder of a, of a rope. Okay, those rope ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And when you are climbing it to go in the vessel, because the vessel is big, mm -hmm. it is, you know, it's moving. Because also the, the water are moving. One guy without psychology was saying, hey, you, 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 you will fall in the water and die. The other guy died yesterday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was, he was also scaring me. But then uh, I was used to go in. And there we, we started, we took the, that job seriously. Because we are told they are going to, to steal fish if you are, you are not careful. Mm. So we started counting the fish. And this Russian, I think Russian, Ukrainian, they are clever. They, when they, they, used, they used to say, chop, chop. Yeah. When they say quick, chop, quick, chop, yeah. it's, it's there, let's, let's go and eat. Oh. Chop, chop, mm. let's go and eat. Mm. But when you go there, if all of you go, some of the guys, they are hiding. And, and they, they, are, they are bringing boxes while you are uh, chop, chop, yeah. Mm. So we realize that, uh, ah, these guys, they are clever. Now we are not all of us going to eat at the same time. Mm. We have a shift. Just stay there. And then uh, they stopped that. I used to go in the sea at 6 o'clock in the evening and they're coming back in the morning. One day when I, I, I was wearing a, a leather jacket, this is a cheap one, and because of this sea weather, it was so, you know, warm and everywhere. Mm. Uh, by my standard, I thought it was a expensive jacket, but it's... One day when I came uh, in the morning, I was told, are you on the tour? Yes. 
The Minister of Home Affairs needs you. Is that, is that application that you had sub submitted? Maybe that one, mm. but I suspected something else had, uh, happened. Mm -hmm. I, the minister, and uh, I, I used to pay, I was supposed to pay 300 uh, uh, rent at the house where I was staying in Wolves Bay. The minister wants me there. I did not pay. And who, who was the minister then? Uh, uh, um, uh, president Tigepinye uh, Pohamba. Uh, okay. He was the president. Mm. The minister wants me. Now I don't have money, but uh, it was uh, at the end of the month. Mm. I'm not paid. I did not pay the house. I, I'm, I'm wanted in Windhoek. What can I do? So this family, the Njeve family, said, no, don't worry. We will borrow the money so that if things go well that side, mm. then you will pay both the money that we, we gave you now and the rent. Yeah. So I came here, I went to the, my Anna's house, that's the, the wife of uh, uh, Komodi Almuta. I was there, and in the morning, I walked to, to town. No shaving, the head is like you nobody's know, business, no haircut, because you have no money. When I came in the ministry there, I find uh, Vicky, Vicky Njulua, I find uh, uh, this, uh, this one who is retiring now, uh, from uh, Big Admin's office, this lady, uh, eh? Linda. They were um, Dinta was, uh, I think, the secretary to the deputy minister, uh, Nangolo, mm -hmm. and the, the other one was a, a secretary to, to, the, to the minister. Yeah. When I came, I said, oh, uh, 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 Kamana knew, knew me. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, you have an appointment of the minister. Yes, I have an appointment of the minister. Okay, I have never met a Namibian minister since I came. Mm. You know, just to in front of a minister. I, and this, yet I don't know why I was called. Yeah. So I was waiting there. And then the minister was informed, no, he was here. So, no, let him come in. The president used to wear uh, specs. And they used to look uh, on, 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 top of them. Uh, on top of the space. When I entered, when he just looked at me, with the qualification probably and the information he got, mm. he received. Yeah. He said, Oh, <laughs> Vengon <laughs> Dalombe, Are you the one I was told? Yeah. I don't know who told him. Mm. I don't know what was told. Yeah. So <laughs> what he had heard yeah, yeah, yeah. and how you looked, it and didn't match. And looked like mm. the head, no, no proper comb the hair, mm. the beard, and that like a, a small a, a, a jacket of mm. fake leather. leather yeah. <laughs> then he said, because uh, there was an Englishman called Picola. I'm very grateful of this man. Yeah. Grateful. He he is the one really who put me, I think, to understand better, even uh, the issue of democracy. Yeah. And the policing in democracy. Mm -hmm. And the issue of basic human rights and, and freedom of citizens. Yeah. This guy was a professional guy. And uh, he was told, finally pick over. Pick over. Apparently, this is the person I was told. Go with him. Mm. <laughs> Let me pick over. <laughs> <laughs> and pick over took me to yeah. his office. Now pick over, looking at the qualification, a person started in Cuba, mm. a communist party, a communist country, to come and advise a minister, a minister in a democratic society. The formula was just to disqualify me. Mm. Just to disqualify me. But then, when I, as a psychologist, I studied him, I said, uh, I will deal with him now. 
I just started saying, you know, I'm a very big Christian. And uh, I was sent by the party to Cuba just to study and to come and uh, participate in the economic constructions, the construction of wah, wah, uh, no? And um, I have to listen to my people. I should not uh, uh, impose decisions to my people. Now you are dismissing the issue of the, 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 com the, com the communist <laughs> ele element, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I, I just listen to what my people say, and uh, I, I comply. Yeah. And he was looking at me. From communism, communism. <laughs> to Christianity. And uh, we started with him. We started his first smartness. You have to be so smart. you were you were coming in as what exactly? As a, I have to take over from him. He's oh. a special advisor to, to the, the minister, minister on police matters. Okay. On police matters, mm. specific, and he his contract was about to to, uh, to come to an end. Yeah. And now they have to prepare someone to take over mm. from him. Yeah. And uh, I understand they were looking for someone who studied the criminology and the criminalistic. Mm. This has a branch of law and so on. So when they looked at my my qualification, maybe they said, oh, This one can do. Yeah. So he said, you have to be professional. You have to be smart mm. when you talk to the minister. And you have to be honest with the minister. And uh, never tell the minister what he or she wanted to hear if it's not the truth. Yeah. If you have to be fired because you told the minister the truth, let it be. Yeah. Then we started and uh, uh, with my those clothes that I had and uh, a small tie, I started, uh, even if you, you are met there, they say, ah, this one is it's coming now in the public service, but it's uh, Elena. Mm. So we started. He started uh, teaching me how to file, filing. Filing, yeah. In those cabinets. Mm. And, um, he, and he wanted to, you to know and remember every, every correspondence that entered in those cabinets. And uh, if there is a, 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 a follow up to the a letter that he entered that cabinet, mm -hmm. he said, I will give you three seconds to retrieve the letter mm. of the same subject. Yeah. Because the minister has no time to wait. You have to give... Once you just see that, a minute, because there are all the letters that are... All the correspondence in that cabinet, you have a, a sheet mm -hmm. and their, their headings are there. Yeah. And I think they are numbered. Even. Numbers, yeah. Immediately you go, you go, you get it. One day, he gave me that task of getting. I could not find the letter. Maybe, I don't know. I, it is there, but I could not find it. Then he says, you are plenty slow. But uh, because of the language, I completed that sentence. He just said, Blend slow. To me, I understand you are blend full. You know, mm. he he said, uh, blend slow, but uh, I used to hear more frequently, mm. blend full. Blend full, yeah. And I became angry. I became angry, totally angry with him. I said, you can't insult me. Mm. I say, Sebastian, cool down. Very slow is not an insult. Don't be emotional. You are, you are a professional. You are trained to become an advisor to the Minister of Home Affairs. Really slow is just to say you are slow to get the letter. Why should you become angry? He closed the door because our office, every time the door is open, say so you can't close people out. This is a people's office. The door should be open. That time he closed the door for us to sort out this problem. Yeah. Then he said, yeah. You understand? Let's go. Let's have a break. 
we went at uh, uh, Kaiser Corner there. Mm -hmm. There was a cafeteria. Yeah. Yeah, let's have a breakfast. And the breakfast lecture started. You know, when you are a professional, even if the minister started shouting at you, you have to cool down. Control your temper. Control your anger. <laughs> I was advising you, and I'm telling you what you have to master before you go. Oh, everything was sorted out. It became happy now. Now I know. Very full and very slow. <laughs> <laughs> so then we went back. So he started training me, and he regarded me as just an innocent person. Say, you know, you are suffering. I will talk to the government to give you um, a house, a government house. Then I was given a house in Pioneer's Park. No, no, not Pioneer's Park, but uh, Olympia. Olympia, Olympia there. Then he said, I will, I will teach you how to put curtains. He took me there. <laughs> because I became like his son. And he became so sweet person to me. He said, you have to know how to, you have to have a driving license. The government can not. So in Angola, you were just uh, uh, driving. Driving. Hmm. Uh, driving. I, I tried to get a license in Cuba, but I couldn't. Um, he said, the government cannot pay you and pay a driver driving you. Hmm. It's a waste of money. You have to have a driving license. So uh, he arranged at the Rapid Valley there. It was a police, uh, police uh, facility. I went there for, for driving license. But those, uh, those uh, who were teaching us how to drive, they were having those old mentality of shouting to people. You must cut. You know, shouting to people. And I remember driving, going toward the Reopos. He said, hey, You know, teaching us. Then uh, I got the license, and uh, then uh, we started with it. When his contract is about to finish, he said, your English is still having a smell of Spanish. You need to go to England with, through a British council. Uh, I will send you to uh, England for, for six months to polish up your, your English. Then he arrived. I went, I went to England at a, a town called Norwich. Norwich, yeah. I went to a town called Norwich. We started there. There I was put in a house of elderly people, retired people. And uh, I met many people from different Thailand, from any part of the world who were in English classes and so on. But these older people, one day they were shouting at me because I was, I was leaning at the table like this, putting my... Yeah, with my... It is a taboo to them. Then they started shouting at me. They said, oh, no. Elder people. This is normal. I don't know insult. I was so surprised. And the first time I saw the, even the snow, one day I woke up, the whole thing is white outside. It was difficult to go to class because it was cold to cold. So, six, month, six months down the line, from there, I went to London or at a senior, senior civil servants, senior civil servant institute or something like that in London. Yeah. One week from there, um, uh, Manchester, Manchester, Edinburgh, from Edinburgh, um, uh, what's the other town? I always say it. The other main town in, in Scotland. Now looking at the police facility attached now to to the police facilities and see how the police manage. And um, we went up to the the Queen the the Queen's uh, holiday uh, resorts yeah. to see the VIP security, all those type of things. And then when I'm done, I came back. 
I came back at home affairs. Few days, there was a reshuffle. There was a reshuffle. Yeah. My minister was reshuffled. New minister came. Comrade Jerry Kanjo came to be a minister of home affairs. Yeah. General Angula was uh, appointed as a chief of police. And uh, uh, um, uh, pick over has to, to go. Maybe my service was not needed by the new coming minister. General Angola pushed me from there to become a commissioner of complaint and discipline to advise him because we were working together with him. Okay. He was a director of passport or something like that. He pushed me. I came here. Um, I took over from one uh, commissioner who was a commissioner of complaint and discipline, the, what we call today IID. Yeah. So I started with a complaint and discipline, you know, investigating here, all these things, uh, grievances, um, public against the police, and um, all over the country we were investigating this. Mm. But uh, did you at any time then had to go through the tra training? No. Physical stuff. Uh, uh, like uh, physical training, police training, you know. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I just started. Uh, uh, when they say advice the minister on yeah. police matter, mm -hmm. I know as a lawyer, police, they, they come and they give evidence. And, yeah. But uh, I, have a, I had a little knowledge how to advise the, the minister on the police matter. But then, with all the, the inspection books that... Uh, the, the, the scoping team from England came to, I learned everything, even in the composition of a docket, yeah. because I, I have never dealt with a docket. And then uh, my deputy, a police, a police officer called uh, Fessel, mm -hmm. is, a, is a, a soul rest in peace. Whenever I wanted to, to learn how a docket is prepared, I just call him, come and explain here. What is this? Then, <laughs> then he started to, <laughs> how to cope the docket, you know? And then I mastered the, the, the docket, even if I'm going for the docket inspections. Mm -hmm. I know how to, to inspect the docket. And then the investigation. And then you come to the Criminal Procedure Act, you come to the Police Act, Policy Regulation, you come to the Constitution, yeah. all these legal instruments. Mm -hmm. You put them together and then you say, yeah. And then you advise even. I became even a, a, a advising the, the Inspector General of Police. I, I used to, to advise him. And then in 2002, I was, a, I was a promoted to a Major General. And then uh, we worked together. When uh, General um, Angola was... Uh, uh, shifted and they transferred to the intelligence. Yeah. Then uh, I was appointed as Inspector General of Police All right. in 2005. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting, long, long story. Um, but um, I think some of the things that you have mentioned here, uh, most people didn't even, even know. But um, I think we only have 15 minutes left. Um, I just want you to just say you have been there now. Uh, since 2004, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. So what is it that you think you have done for the force that wasn't there? Something that you brought in. And w as you are going now, um, they must remember you as someone who would have done what? We, in, in, in the Namibian police, we work as a team. Mm -hmm. I have a, a very... Uh, motivated and capable management mm -hmm. that uh, assisted me together to shape the force. Okay. The force was uh, very small in size, mm -hmm. and the force grew and became bigger. And the need first is to train police and make sure that the police understand their mandate, particularly the issue of uh, enforcing and protecting the basic human rights of citizens. 
and the treating people uh, objectively and uh, behave uh, apolitical. <laughs> and uh, make sure that uh, you train the police officer to be professional in the engagement, in their engagement with the members of the public. Mm. Always to be polite, to be friendly and professional, mm. and very objective and honest. Mm. But how easy is it to be apolitical when you went to train as a Swapo cadre and you moved through the ranks as a Swapo cadre? Do you think that is practical to be apolitical now? In the performance of your duty, you have to. Okay. And all of us, we belong to a political party. When the, when the election comes, yeah. we go and elect a, a political party for our choice. But you only have that political jacket when you enter in the booth to vote. Yeah. After you get out from that voting booth, that political jacket is off. You treat everyone as per the Constitution, no favor, no discrimination, and um, uh, you become a professional. We are professionals. Apart from uh, belonging to different political party, yeah. we are professional in the performance and the execution of our duty. Mm. And we have to be, yeah. if we want to be called really a national police that is there to protect each and every citizen. But again, some people would want to know, if you claim to be professionals, how then is it that some of the officers, they have been caught stealing guns, uh, they've um, harassed people, some they've shot people. So can you define what kind of professionalism this could be? Yes. That, uh, th those incidents mm. are happening everywhere. Even when you have a big force, you will all have some ele element that uh, uh, are not behaving according to the code of conduct of our force. Yeah. And uh, that's why they involve themselves in uh, unbecoming behavior, like uh, corruption and theft and, uh, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Some are uh, becoming uh, uh, abuse of power or abuser of power. Mm -hmm. uh, the police have got power, but that power should be diligently uh, utilized in the execution of our duty. Yeah. It is not allowed for a police officer to maltreat members of the public, mm -hmm. to brutalize and uh, uh, use uh, um, uh, or abuse power when they are dealing with members of the, of, of, of the public. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's, you are dealing with human beings. Yeah. And uh, it's difficult to, when you are recruiting people to look in the heart of this person and say, is this honest mm -hmm. or this one is not honest? But uh, if the person does not have a criminal record, you think this is a person who is crying and they want a job. Mm -hmm. You employ and they provide a job. And they abused the opportunity that uh, they were offered by the nation. Yeah. That uh, in many in the world you can always find in discipline people, mm. and uh, you cannot roll out, rule it out uh, in the Namibian police. Mm. But we are shaping yeah. the force and uh, motivating members of the force to refrain themselves from unbecoming mm. behaviors. All right, you will be living at a, at a time when the forces faced with uh, quite a number of challenge challenges. Can you maybe just say some of the challenges that you can identify now to say, I am living, I have done what I could do, but still there are these challenge challenges which you think your successor will have to deal with? It really is undeniable that uh, the government has done a lot in uh, improving the living and the working conditions of, uh, of the police. And they have done a lot to, to avail uh, uh, a budget that can assist the management of the police, mm -hmm. the ministry, to come up with the police stations, yeah. uh, accommodations, uh, equipment, but there's still much needed to be done. Uh, the colleagues that are, are, are going to continue, they are here, are here. Mm -hmm. they will always uh, continue negotiating with the, with the government so that um, the uh, service condition of the police can be improved, more particularly the, the junior one. Yeah. We have made the several submissions already, and uh, because of the economic and financial 
a situation and through which our country is traversing, mm -hmm. you can't also, uh, um, you know, demand something that the country cannot afford for now. Mm -hmm. But what we are saying in future, uh, whenever the uh, our economy, our finance uh, affords, mm -hmm. we should look at uh, at uh, at the service condition of. Uh, of, of the police force. You know the country, the, the, the government has to look after the teachers, mm -hmm. the nurses, the doctors, the police, the army, the correctional service. The children are so many. Yeah. And uh, as, a, as, a, as a father of uh, all these children, you have to treat them equally. Yeah. So, but our, we are hopefully that uh, one of the good day, there will be a shining light at the end of the tunnel. The only thing is that we have to be patient. Mm -hmm. And we should not ref have a reason of stealing and uh, committing fraud because of uh, our salaries, uh, the salaries are lower. Mm -hmm. That is immoral and that is unpatriotic. Yeah. People have to be patriotic and sacrifice for their, for their country mm -hmm. under whichever circumstance. Mm -hmm. So my last question is, are you going out a happy man? Or if you are given another opportunity, there's something else that you might say, I should do this. Are you going out happy to say, I was called to do this and I did it, and whatever I did, I believed in, in it. Is there anything else that you would want to say, maybe this one, I should have done it better? Yeah, I, nobody's perfect. Mm. Since I started, I might have offended the many, um, if I have offended them, it was not intentional. It is just within the performance of, of my duty. Many people, they don't understand some of the actions that we are taking, but uh, we are taking it to ensure that there is a, a, a public law and order, peace and security of everyone. We want our society is based on the pillars of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of law and the order, and uh, to be Every Namibian citizen, whenever you are promoting your own rights and freedom, make sure that uh, you respect the freedom and, and the rights of the next person. Yeah. And uh, therefore, I'm going out very happy, and uh, I'm going out consciously that I have offended some, but uh, I have also gratified uh, others. You will never... Uh, satisfy everybody in a society, mm -hmm. and they will never be a perfect person. All right. I might have stepped on the toes of mm -hmm. some. I, I apologize if that is uh, the case, but uh, it was never intentional. Mm. So is Aitota still a Christian? Uh, yeah. No. Mm. Yeah, I'm a bit of a <laughs> tail. <laughs> I'm an atheist. <laughs> All right. Atheist. All right. Um, <laughs> let me thank you, uh, Inspector General, for I can't believe that we have been here for three hours. Uh, but for us, we are actually used to be doing this. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to share with us the journey that you traveled. But I'm trying to think you never had time with your family. You were at a young age, up and down. Are you now going to settle down? Because once, once it's in the blood, I think you might also think of go, going back to Angola. Are you, are you now settling down to say, this is me, I've actually gone, I've done that, I've actually seen? Yes, um, it is true. Hmm. Most of uh, my elder families uh, are no more. Mm -hmm. I think the part, the, the, the part of my mother... There is one yeah. who is very old on the part of my father. I can't remember that uh, there is one. But uh, my brothers are there. Uh, some uh, aunties, they are there. I will, uh, when I settle down, I will make up a, a plan yeah. of making sure that I visit them, where I can drop a bag of uh, meal, mm -hmm. meal, I can uh, sugar or whatever. I can go and uh, drop there, ca soap. Yeah. For them, just to uh, to say now I have time to come and and visit you. All right. You only heard that I'm back, but mm. uh, uh, back alive. But uh, um, and the visit also friends. 
combatants that were with me in the liberation struggle, mm -hmm. uh, and the friends that were with me at school, yeah. and the comrades, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. they have more time to you know to mingle. All right, all right. Uh, thank you so much. It's uh, almost uh, two two o'clock here, and um, thank you for your patience. Uh, we've been here for too long. Um, I would also want to thank my techn technical team and uh, the top brass that's also accompanying you here. Thank you so, so much. Jax, let us go back to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> thank you um, uh, very much, Wanda, but uh, I should thank uh, the commissioners here because mm -hmm. I misunderstood these things. Now, um, I know how much uh, I have interrupted uh, your work. You people, you are very, very, very busy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I should really apologize to keep you here. Uh, <laughs> you might have also benefited to know something. But um, please, my apology. I don't want anything delayed to say, no, we were <laughs> three hours with the general. The whole, anyhow, I'm used to receive blames. Uh, just send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, the reason why we do the, we do this because this is going to be kept. So any, anyone who wants to know the journey that you have taken so far, they can still go. They can say we want to understand the student. We don't throw away, and this is going to stay as long as we are ra -ra -ra running. All right. Very good. All right. Very Thank good. you so much. The only thing I forgot is yeah. that. Um, to tell you that I visited the farm where I was working uh, yes, when I'm Inspector General. Yeah. We were in, 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 the, the, in the Karas. Yeah. I visited there. My uh, small house where I used to sleep, it collapsed, but I still <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, um, you still have the right to.